Okay, let's get straight to the biscuits. It's time to do some programming. So, last time I was doing the DOS um, box stuff and I've gotten that fully developed. So now I'm just going to be trying Windows support for it. Um, so here we are today running what is definitely Windows. Um, and I'm just going to prove to you that it's Windows because if I run if I run this, it says uh, DOSBox SDL232. It's it's Windows. It says self to start. See, it's got the Windows icons. So let's try and do some Windows programming. You're lagging because Wi-Fi doesn't work in Windows. Wow. You know. Uh, hang on. There we go. Much more windows. Oh, that went away. Okay, so. <clears throat> Today we're going to be trying to get this thing to network in windows. Anyway, it's slow heavy. My laptop constantly sounds like it's going to explode and the Wi-Fi is crap, man. Well, is the Wi-Fi better on Linux or is it just the, the laptop or computer with Wi-Fi? Wait, I already have Tmux open. What am I doing? Um, oh, that's all my IP shit. Just ignore it. Just ignore my IPs. They're fine. Okay. Where am I? So this is the regular stock DOS box um, directory. And so we should also have, yeah, this is the Windows directory. And I did some work into getting it compiling. You don't know, it keeps disconnecting it slower. You reinstalled Grouter today and Wi-Fi was flawless. Who the F knows what MS has done? Well, you never know. So let's check out my branches because I did actually clean up so much of this. Here we go. So I've just mainly made it so it compiles and boots on Windows but doesn't run. So let's see. What we'll do is we'll do git fetch origin. Git checkout whip slurpy5. Yes, and this is the actual branch that I should be on. I had to add a whole bunch of stuff so that cross-compiling would work. I'm using MXE for cross-compiling. So I'm actually cross-compiling to Windows and then running it with Wine. Yeah, I type a little bit fast. It's like Sonic. So let me show you the issue. Um, where you go. So I have this code for um, deleting Windows junk. Does it want... Oh yeah, it has been changed. Hang on a second. Oops. There we go. And so let's run make. Oh no, hang on. I have to set my path. One second. I'll have this directory be the make directory. There we go. All right, and this directory can edit file. Uh, this terminal can edit files. Files, as they say. I just woke up like half an hour ago and I decided if there's one time to do a Windows stream, it would be, it would be now. Okay. So, um, source misc. Okay, I'm in source. So let's see. Ethernet slurp.cpp. Perfect timing for you. Why? Were you going to stream? 
I can shut down my stream and watch your stream if you want, if that's what you want. You know what? Let me just hover my mouse over the OBS button. Would that help? Do it. Do it. Do it. No, I'm just kidding. <sighs> okay. So, we've removed the inhibitor. So, Slurp will now set up, but we don't have code for actual polling here. And the reason is because Windows doesn't have a poll function. Like I'll show you. Let's do um, you know I won't I won't even bother, I'll just copy the code. Ah, oh, perfect stream because you installed Windows. <coughs> yeah. So let's find our DOS junk thing. And let's run some uh, Windows. Should probably run it in terminal. The freaking clock. What's wrong with the clock? It's regular clock. Alright, so what happens is... Slurp actually does give to... Hey Kaz, Nyan, that's what I say. Um, so Slurp does actually give an IP and whatever on Windows. It's not on UTC, it's on Australian time. But when I actually try to connect, it doesn't work because, um, whoops, Slurp doesn't know when file when the connections are actually ready to read. So let me show you how that works. Let's go back to Linux, the Linux code. And we're going to add some instrumentation because I tried to fix this on an actual Windows system and uh, I just couldn't because I wasn't doing it properly. So let's see. Vim source misc ethernet slap. And let's see. We're going to look at the functions that we need to implement. So Slurp wants you to register a poll, an arbitrary file explanation. Do you like Windows XP? It's okay. Um, and then it wants to poll it, and it will return um, the results of the poll. Then it will return. Then we'll have poll get slurp events. Would you use it as a main OS? Definitely. One thing we might actually quickly do now, while I'm thinking about how to solve this, because I think I'm going to have to implement some tracing, which is going to be a bit annoying, but I'll show a trick for that. I'm going to boot up React OS. And we're going to see if DOSBox X works on it. Because this might be a test system, I'm not sure. Uh, shout out to ReactOS for flawless installer. Flawless installation. Like, usually I have to spend an hour, and more than an hour, um, setting this thing up. But, uh, worked right away. Even has internet. Um, the cursor grabbing doesn't work really well for me. Alright, programming. Let's go there. Let's check the run.sh. I'll release the cursor grab. So that's my React OS stuff. My options. And let's open up the internet. Um, we don't have the internet, do we? Let's install the internet. Internet. No. Firefox. 48. That's new enough, isn't it? Isn't the latest version like 84? How am I this morning? Yes. How are you? Let's get... Compo uh, not Composer, K-Million. Let's install that. So I'm very surprised that this time React OS came with like networking drivers, maybe audio drivers? I'm not sure. Probably not, yeah. 
Maybe it's always had working network drivers. I don't know. You exist in this dimension. That's good. So with DOSBox, um, the code that we're writing, I'm going to have to add tracing so we can kind of figure out what we what what Slurp is doing and wants from us in an ideal situation, so we can mimic that on Windows. Um, so I'm going to have to actually like somehow write this to a separate file. Sorry, I'm just pouring hot tea. It's very hot, actually. Um, I've got to get that tea every morning, you know. The um, the the tea, the teapot that I have, yeah, it, it spills a little bit, but uh, it's fine. All right, so this web browser looks legit. So let's search uh. DOSBox X. Yeah, is this emulating Australian internet? Or is this just slow? Kill flash dabs, it worked. So let's download. Is there a portable version for Windows? Definitely not. Oh, more options. I have a feeling it's not going to uh, show me a portable version. Oh, please, where are we? Windows packages installer or portable? Uh, we'll get MinGW Win32 because that's what I'll be targeting. We'll save that, and we also need to install something that'll open zips. So let's install, okay, well, I guess, I guess this is the only thing my computer can do at the moment. Um, I guess I could minimize that. No, I guess, uh, I guess the taskbar is stopped responding. That's fine. I don't need a taskbar. Um, we're just going to search up pzip. Or zip, I'll have to put it, it should be in tools. I'll install pzip. I, unfortunately, I don't have a license for WinRAR, so I'm not going to be installing that. Okay, yes, I accept the GPL. Yeah, sure, all of that. Yep. Create desktop shortcut. Open folder. And we'll close the React OS thing. The uh, browser. I don't know why I called it React OS. So can we open this with, with pzip? Is that registered now? Yeah, open it with pzip, please. Please zip. I don't know why it still says the setup is running. Oh, because it is. So React OS is a little bit, the, it's janky when it comes to drawing graphics, like the user 32 stuff. Okay, well, Explorer's crashed a bit. Let's just uh, click OK there, and it should restart. That's what happens. Sometimes Explorer crashes on Windows. It's the experience. Right, let's drag this here. It's wine. It's fine. No, React OS does its own user 32. Um, okay, well, I did want to, I do actually want to put my mouse at the quit button down there, but I guess pzip doesn't want that. Ah, I gotcha. All right, DOSBox. Um, oh, it wants Massa. Let's retry. Okay. And uh, we might actually have to disable graphics acceleration for that. So can I open a terminal here? Tools. No, there's no terminal button. Okay, hang on a second. Um, so we'll go to desktop. MinGW build. 
All right. And there should be a command for DOSBox to generate the uh, default configuration. Uh, default conf, does it have save conf? Um, is that a separate terminal window for that? Okay, yeah, I guess so. Conf, edit conf, user conf. I should have used the low end version. Let's just try that instead. I know I'm burning too much time in this, but I just want to see. I need to see. Let's put the low end one there. I guess there's also regular MinGW will extract that too. Um, I don't know what just happened. Let's go cancel. And we'll just put regular. Oh no, I, is that the back button? No, that's convert. Thanks for having the convert button there. Browser up. Here we go. I successfully extracted files from the from an archive. Are you proud of me? All right. Let's see. Um, so MinGW, does that work? Yay! Uh, what about MinGW low end? Hey, syrup slushy, what's up? Yay. Ah, uh, yay. All right. So the reason I tested all this is kind of to see if it's going to actually uh, kind of Windowsy work. Will I put this on bare hardware? Absolutely not. All right. So let's shut down. No crashes either. Usually I've had a blue screen around this time in uh, React OS. So it's getting more and more stable. Okay, let's get back to what I was doing. So, which terminal is the, the Windows one? Okay, so DOS one is this one. I mean, uh, Linux one is this one. So we're going to add some tracing stuff here. So, let's just open a file and write to it. Okay. Um, does, do we have files? I guess. I hope so. So we'll just do a quick... Um, let's put this as a global variable. That'll be fine. People love global variables. Global variables. And we'll do tracer equals f open. Um, slurp trace dot log and we want to do right right plus hang on a second what's f open want for for flags um thanks for that very strange who ruined my man pages what the heck oh is it trying to use a font yeah, it's trying to... What? what did it do? Okay, well, it's fine. I'll just try and try and understand this. Um, w plus... A plus. I'll do A plus. Um, F right. Wait, is it F right? Or is it SN... SN printf. It will. It would be. Would it be f printf? You know what? I'm just going to open the internet to look for this. I refuse to change my terminal away from Windows console. Would you pirate Half Life Two for this true Windows? XP experience? Maybe. What the 
the hell am I doing? I know how to use F, printf. What's wrong with me? All right, um, slurp connection created. So what we're gonna do is, I'm not sure if time stamping will matter at the moment. I'll time stamp it anyway, whatever. Um, I have a function to get the time here. Slurp clock get nanoseconds. So let's do that. You thought this was an actual Windows XP virtual machine for 10 minutes? Wow. What's wrong with you? So let's add some tracing. So we're going to write polls clear enter, polls clear exit. Let's just see if this compiles before I go copy pasting my code everywhere. Too few arguments to function. What? Oh. Let's put zero for that. I also figured out um, oops, how to jump backwards between stuff that I spent a while banging my head on last stream. You actually used the, the change jump list. Oops. Um, I, f I forget how to use it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's G that and then G comma. Well, is that also undo? What the heck? God, I just don't know how to use Vim. Um, oh, I'm doing G dash. I'm sorry. I don't know how to use computers. So it should be G comma. Yeah, and so now I can jump between where I last made changes. Your dad punched your mum in the stomach when she was pregnant with me, so maybe it was that. Well, I mean, first of all, dark. You're messing up my stream vibe with that. Secondly, maybe. Too many arguments for format. Unknown type conversion character. Oh, GCC. Are you giving me the... It's because I put a colon there, isn't it? You have the darkest law? Definitely, yeah. Okay, why is that not working? L, too many arg is it because I'm using L instead of LI? Let's try that. There we go, long integer. Well, that's probably gonna fail on Win- ah. I don't know if that'll break on Windows. So let's see. Let's go to our DOS junk directory and we run run. And it should give us a little trace for my slurp stuff here. Here we go. Polls clear, enter and exit. That's good. So it's tracing all that junk. Good. So. Next we're going to, we're probably not going to trace polls clear because that's trash. We're going to trace poll add though. So what we're going to do is trace. We'll just put poll add here. We'll trace single function calls because we're not doing any recursion. So we're going to do poll add with that file description, the slurp events and the real events. Yeah. FD slurp events real events 
And you know what? We're going to change this to slurp trace dot Linux dot log. And we're just going to make the W plus so that way we can uh, overwrite the file. Pulse poll. Uh, let's see. Pulse poll. We're going to print the timeout and the poll size and the return value. Um, polls.size, ret, and then ret greater than negative one. And then we're going to print poll get slurp events. And so we're going to print the uh, IDA. I also fixed it all up so it uses arrays and stuff. So you know, there's no hard-coded 256 size arrays around. Probably should have mentioned that. So let's do this. Real event, uh, events. Slurp events. And then we shall <coughs> print that. I think that's it. There we go. So let's make that. Um, we got some errors. Let's just check this out. IDX timeout MS format argument has type. So I guess FD should be a long because I'm on 64 bit Linux. Hang on. Just set these all along. Maybe that will help. But I'll have to change it for Windows because Linux has a different ABI. Okay, that just made more errors. You know what? It's fine. If it prints wrong, I'll just look at the output. Or I might just change the terminal settings so I can actually read stuff. I don't know why I'm not doing that. I mean, the Windows gag is getting a bit old already. Edit. Colors. Colors from system theme. There we go. So IDX, let's just make this now. So IDX, ah, I've forgotten to put the time. Why didn't anyone tell me in chat? There we go. You didn't tell me. Wait, does that mean... Um, Alright, and a pole size has, for some reason, a long size. Gotcha. And there's another error. Arr. Too many arguments for format. Okay, that one's fairly reasonable. Okay, so now let's collect a trace of our machine booting. And it should tell us kind of what we need to know about slurp. Um, that's also, yeah, let's run this now. And then we're just going to do h, uh, mtcp slash htget.exe. And let's get to gear.org. 
Let's try it twice. And a third time. And then we'll quit. Well, I don't know why I clicked no. All right, let's look at this trace. So poles pole is often doing nothing. Then we have, all right, let's filter this out using grep. Um, grep v poles pole. I just want to look at specific parts of this. So we have pole add, pole get slurf events, zero, zero, zero. So it does that for every file descriptor, I think. That kind of makes sense. So it has this file descriptor 18, um, a mask of 25, I think. And then that moves to slurp. Wait, let's see what this is. Slurp events, and that goes to real events. So slurp events would be 25, it'd do that. So it adds, every time um, it does a loop or whatever, it adds that. Then it has two file descriptors, which it adds. And then it starts to get events. So let's see what happens here. So it adds two file descriptors and it gets some events and it adds it again and it gets some events. And this is within uh, So it has some get events there. Get slurp events there. Um, and then it also has the events here again. I didn't print the um, file descriptor, did I? The ID here, hang on. My mistake. I'll do that next time, but I can kind of just guess from the order that I added. So, when does it stop being one zero zero for that one? Because it looks like it kind of sticks. And then it removes it. So it sticks. Then we get slurp events here, 0, 4, 2, and that seems to make it just drop file descriptor 19. 1910, so. Okay, so we have some kind of ideas about how slurp is working. So let's try and windows this a bit. <sighs> All right, so polls clear in windows does nothing at the moment. Um, poll add, nothing. Polls poll. So we don't have a poll on windows. Instead we have to use WSA enum events. Enum network events. Hmm. Actually, let's try and use select first. I'll use select, and then once we get something, we'll just maybe check what state things are in. So let's say windsock. So how do we do that? So it has the number of file descriptors. Is that unique file descriptors? That's ignored on Windows, so we can just set that to zero. Read file descriptors, write file descriptors, and accept file descriptors. Okay, and we're just gonna do that each time. So let's see how a naive select uh, implementation works. So let's open up ethernet slurp.h. 
and we're going to just add some structs for whatever select uses. So FD set. Uh, yeah, we're not going to use a vector for this FD set because there's a portable way to do it, kind of. FD set read FDs. FD set write FDs. Um, FD set accept FDs. And what else? Timeout. Well, we know the timeout already. That's done when we choose to ask it to select. Maximum time provided in a time value structure. All right. So when we need to poll, we'll have to clear all these. Um, I think it's FD clear or something. Or is it FD zero? I think it's FD zero. Whoops. Read FDs. I think that's the actual way to clean out. Um, FD clear. Again, why is my terminal like this? Did I not save the... Um, the colors? Let's save. Yeah, okay, there we go. So FD zero just clears the set. So then we do poll add. We're going to look at what events we want. Um, here we have kind of existing code that will do that. So let's do real events. And then we'll do um, FD set. Oops. I'm not doing too good with my keyboard today. FD set. Um, and that would be poll in is read, I think. Yeah, let's go with that. Then that would be write, and that one would be accept. And then we'll just junk all that. And I should be returning an ID that's used for, um, we'll just return the file descriptor for now, since we're actually using a proper set. Um, so let's see, now we have polls poll. That just runs select. So we're going to do int red equals select. Um, we'll just put null for that because we're being not portable today. Um, then we're going to do read FDs. Right, FDs. Accept FDs. Hmm, okay. And then we're going to do timeout. Oh, we need the timeout. So let's do timeout. I think I have to convert that to a time val. So time val struct, time val time out, time out dot time value seconds equals zero, I think. And microseconds. I guess I should be dividing both, shouldn't I? So time out milliseconds um, divided by uh, a thousand and timeout milliseconds. I think that's times a thousand. Um, but we also want to get rid of friggin seconds there. I think one millisecond is a nanosecond, or is that a microsecond? Uh, Millisecond in, what's u second? I think that's microsecond. 
yeah, microsecond, because I know there's milli and there's micro. All right, a thousand, got it. Um, and that seems fine. Then we'll just return ret less than negative one, because I believe that's the error. Okay. And when we get the slurp events, we'll just use FD is set. You can kind of tell I've written this code a bit before. Um, if change to FD is set. Read FDs, IDX, and we'll just set pull in right FDs, we'll set poll out, and then accept FDs, why did I put that there, and that would be pre I think, okay, so this looks good so far, let's test it. I might need to include windsock stuff in a second, but I think I already included it. Make. So that FD set. I did not set the FD there, I think. I think that's what it's complaining about. Accept FD, accept FS. I think that is all the bugs. Ah, I've got it around the wrong way. There we go. Nope, still error, read FS. There we go. Nope, time val to P time val. Whoops, I didn't uh, make a pointer to it. What's that error? Unused variable real events, passing null to pointers, so that should probably be zero and real events should be that okay so let's just make that and we'll try and test it and then we'll add tracing to see why it inevitably doesn't work so let's go dos junk let's try running this Oh, here we go, we got a crash. Why though? Page fault on read access to C8. What's C8? Am I winning, son? Yeah. This was not the bug I was expecting. So let's see, what is that in binary? No, that's not useful. What's that in deck? Do I just remove that for decimal? 200. Alright, so... 200 is a weird number. Let's look at the code again and see why it says 200. Where did it get 200 from? See, now I'm in Windows and I don't have a debugger. I also don't think I built with debugging symbols on. Alright, let's see. Let's 
This looks fine. I think it might not be fine. Wait, no, I'll assume that those are fine because that's the type checking. So I have a logic error here. I guess we might as well add tracing. So let's copy and paste this from this file. Oops, wrong file. Yeah, ruining everything. Win32, file tracer. Let's go, we're doing it, we're making it happen, yeah. Yeah, as they say. Why is this looking so weird? It's because I set the monospace font, but I didn't set up the uh, system font. There we go. Where are we using the tracer? So, polls clear. Yeah, that's fine. Let's copy the polls add stuff. So, poll add. Not here, not this terminal, poll add. Poll add and we'll then we'll just do, wait, I have Discord open and it's giving me noises. I hate that. How dare Discord do that? Absolutely trash. All right, we're going to do poll add here and we're just going to print out the uh, slurp events and then we're just going to we'll also add a print for the FD set stuff. So that we can just kind of know if it's actually set in the file descriptor table that we made. Did I mix up the um, is set thing? Am I anti FOSS? Why would I use Discord? Yeah, so I actually hate open source, that's why I'm using Windows today. I'm sorry you had to find out this way. All right, so that's that's that bug we found just now. Um, I've been putting is set around the wrong way. Um, right, FDs. The truth comes out. Yeah, you know. As I said on Mastodon the other day, open source your spaghetti, but keep the secret source secret. Keep the special source secret. And I live by that and I die by that. All right, that seems fine. Oops. This should be IDX. Not FD. And we should probably also add like actual tracing. Um, so this would be poll get slurp events. And then we have the file descriptor, IDX, and then we have the slurp events. You like this philosophy? Can you pay for more? Yeah. Join my Patreon. Get it? Patreon. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not going to... Uh, I'll add something for select here. Polls, poll. 
um, timeout and return. Let's just do it that. Paying Patreon, yeah. So once again, I get warnings. Um, so on Windows, it looks like clock get nanoseconds is not a long because Windows uses 32-bit integers on 64-bit systems. Um, argument 3 has type int. And I didn't set the correct, I forgot to add in the clock stuff here. Oh no, no, that's not what I wanted. I just copy and paste it manually. I put a macro in a macro, don't do that. Um, where else did I forgot to put the time? Everywhere, apparently. That's not good, is it? Probably should have made it macro or something. Macros. Um, Ripley concept of time. Yeah, time had a good run. Less warnings, what did we get? Format I expects argument of type in 64T. So wait, FD is set. Argument three. So FD is set has, is a long. All right. That's fine. Let's pour some more tea. I'm drinking uh, eucalyptus tea. Did I get any warnings there? Format I expects argument of int, but argument 3 has long int. So, wait. Was I wrong about the slurp stuff? Format. So the slurp stuff is actually. Mm. Okay, so. You know what? Screw it. It doesn't matter. The time doesn't matter. There, is that all about the time? Argument three? Yeah. Has type in 64. What if I just do LLI? Does that work? And let's go back here. So that's long, long int. That's right, because long int would be a 64 bit thing, wouldn't it? I think. Okay, all the air is gone. Let's run this. Run. So it's got the trace, the Win32 trace. Uh, it's got some glitches at the top, that's fine. Let's see. I try to htgetjukier.org uh, and it works. Now it's uh, surprising because I must have opened up the wrong DOS box. Okay, well, this is actually Windows and it seems to be working a bit. Hmm.
Very strange. Hmm. Let's try a different thing. See, I didn't expect this to work. So now I'm kind of confused because when I tried this on my computer before, it, fra it crashed. So what that is telling me is that either I'm really good at stuff or wine has a bug. So let's just quit. And let's look at the trace here. Poles, poles, zero, negative one. So select is always returning negative one. That's not good, right? So ret, so we have the timeout as zero and the return is negative one. So we're actually failing to poll. That's not good, is it? Hmm. Returns the total number of socket handles that are ready. Um, okay, so we have a error here. Socket error. So, is it socket error? What is socket error value? Negative one. So, we're getting socket error there. Now, this is confusing because you would think with socket error... Oh, that's because there's no... I, that's probably because it's empty. Alright. So, we actually should be checking if there's um, file descriptors there. So what we should actually do is have a constant called um, select file descriptors. And we'll just um, increase that with every file descriptor we add. And then we'll just do Why am I adding an underscore fat? So I'll do that, select FDs, select FDs. And if select FDs equals zero, then we'll just return true, because we succeeded. That seems fair. So let's go to B2 and select FDs, great. So that's one bug solved. Looks like the clock get time thing on Windows isn't down to the nanosecond. Or, yeah. What the heck? I asked for my clock to be micro for nanosecond accurate and Windows is rounding it down to the microsecond. Okay, so let's see. Poll add, poll get revents. So we add that. So 25. I'll have to scroll up a bit more. We probably want it to kind of mimic the, the setup we have here. Polls add 18.25.1. Okay, so let's put that on one line. My mic has a bunch of fuzzies and inferents and it's gone. Nice. What are you, what are you saying? Look, I'm, I have ordered new microphone stuff, so I don't want to hear about how the quality is bad, because it's going to get fixed. It will be fine. You will be happy. It's good now. I hope so, but I have ordered new microphone stuff. 
it will be fine. So let's see that, that, that. And I guess in the Linux one, we also want to not poll if there's no file descriptors. If polls dot size equals zero, return true. So I'll just make that and I'll make this one. That's because I copy pasted it. It should be IDX. There we go. Okay, so that removes some of the noise, hopefully. Let's do run.sh to do the Linux one. And run dot win32 to do the Windows one. So this is Linux. Let's try and contact jukia.org a few times. And then, I know, google.com. Then quit. And same here. We're going to do htget, sorry, mtcb htget.xe htpjukia.org. Be confused as to why that works. And then we'll have to do google.com. And let's compare traces. Um, okay, something messed up there with get slurp events on the X. Oops. Oops. I don't know why that's there. We'll just ignore that for now. So get slur prevents there is complete broken and we'll have to do it again. But let's look at the Windows thing. So in Windows we do poll add 204, which puts it in the read thing. Um hmm. 25 it's not an even number. Is it asking for some more events that it wants to be handled? Hmm. That 25 is really weird. Why is it 25? Hang on a second. That's 25. So one is read, then you have these other two. I guess we can just ignore them, right? They might be like errors or something. I don't know. Um. So we have get slurp events. We have, um, so there's nothing there until get slurp events says something. So there, hmm. There it says get slurp events one and then it says it's got something to read. So do we have something similar on Windows, uh, on Linux? 
I'll have to fix that so I can compare. All right, let's run it on Linux again. I'm kind of annoyed because the bug which I was chasing is just not here. Which is bad. Because I know what the bug is. So now I have to try and reproduce it. Great. Um, let's just get Google as well. Trying to get two different websites there and then we quit. And let's open up the Linux log. Poll get slurp events. Poll get slurp events. And then it has a big number there. Man, tracing is hard. Slurp clock, ID, real events. Slurp events. Okay, so the number at the end is actually just garbage. Gotcha. Probably from the stack or something. I don't know. So let's see. Polls, poll, poll add, polls, poll. So let's see, slurp connection created, polls add 18, polls, polls, poll gets slurp events, 0, 0, 0. So what we should be doing is looking in this column, 0, 0, 0. So poll gets slurp events, 0, 1, 1, what would that mean? In Linux. So that would be... ID, real events, and slurp events. Yeah, so zero would be the, not the file descriptor, but the number in the index. One would be slurp events and real events. Okay, so here we just have a single, you know, just one out of the blue, which matches what we see in Windows here. Where is it? Here. And it goes back to zero. for a while. Um, let's actually search for what we're looking for. So we want to search for, I don't know, one. There we go. So whenever we see one, which is read, it usually pops up for a single time, a single second. So what about Two, four. Okay, I'm gonna have to grep through this. Um, less slurp trace dot win thirty two. I'm going to grep v poll get slurp prevents. Um, Okay, this is annoying. Actually, no, I should be like tracing this. I should be editing the trace to only trace conditionally. So we add the polls and the poll is about reading there. And then is there any time it adds a poll for writing? Here we go. So it adds a new poll for writing, which would be number 208 and then it doesn't return any events there Does that keep it highlighted here yeah. so we scroll down and we should find poll.get events 208 so let's see if that has an actual um does that ever oops 
There we go. So then poll get events 2081 returns reading. All right, yeah. Sorry, that's not the number of events, so it should be like two. So then it finds writing. Okay. So it finds the writing thing there, and then it stops adding it. So this is kind of identical to what's happening in Windows. Sorry, it wouldn't be 208. It would be get events, and then we'd find I might have to make the output kind of the same. I'm not sure. Poll gets slurp events one. And then it should be, I think, two. Not two. One. I'm not sure what it would be because this uses a bit mask instead. One. Right, so we're going to have to limit tracing here. Hmm. This seems like it works, so we're going to have to take a drastic move. Um, we're going to have to... Oops, wrong, wrong, wrong thing. Um, sorry, git status uno git add source, git commit, m temp. And then we're going to actually check our branches and then we're going to check out the code that I know is broken. So if this breaks and that confirms that wine isn't accidentally fixing my code. So it would be temp work, I think. All right, so let's see what happens here. Let's just compare it for now. Yeah, kind of, select bad. All right, so I set FD's max wrong, I think. Select function should be something else, but we don't need it on Windows, so I'll just set it to zero again. Poll in, out, pre, and then I try to set poll air and poll hop, which I think we need, right? So let's check out the source. Oops. And we'll just see if that works. Let's try and compile this. Probably won't work. All right. Yeah, so this is some old code. Unless I just check out all of the source and the include, that might work. Uh, it's not going to work though. Because it's going to give me errors. Hang on a second. Git reset head include the source. Git check out head source include and we want to pull specific files so include ethernet.h source misc ethernet and then source hardware any 2000.cpp okay does that check out just those files no it didn't 
Usenet slurp stuff. Uh, uh, uh. And then we just want to get ethernet.cpp too. There we go. Let's try making that. Drink some tea. And then we'll see what's truly up, as they say. I think I might also be using a different slurp version, if that makes any difference. Um, let's go to React OS. Let's open you up. And we'll see, we might have to copy over now dosbox.exe and see if that works. I'll do that another time. Oh, I have to add guest forwarding so it could see my uh, my friggin HTTP server which I'll have to set up. Hmm. I'm suspicious of this. I'm very, very suspicious of this. Um. Hmm. This should not be working. I don't want to be a downer, but. This coach, I'm going to get my Windows laptop. All right. Uh, how am I going to get the code to my Windows laptop? Could not convert zero from int to slurp timer. That's okay. Um, source misc ethernet slurp.h timers. So this is my code that I'm pretty sure be broken. Bring the big boy over. Uh, I don't have, I don't know how I'll test it. I guess, I guess what I could do is just copy the, the file over, right? All right, hang on. And then I can just like actually test if it works. Okay, laptop, turn on. Yeah, I have to put the charger in. INET P2IN is not declared in this scope. That's okay, because I have a fix for that. Who is editing this file? Is it me? Is it me? No, it's no one. Yeah, I should be including that. Why is INET... Oh, I didn't set the WinNT version. Silly me. Win32, wind... See, this version of MinGW is a bit... Wingy? And this should be 601. Is that an L for a long? No, it's just that. Okay, we're going to make this. We're going to find the charger for my laptop. Found it. 
and we're going to copy the files over to my laptop and confirm that this is indeed broke. That it is does not that it does not work. Otherwise, I'm going to be really upset. Because if the executable I made works in Wine, but not Windows, that is a oh, that's a spark. Yep. Sometimes when you plug stuff in, it sparks. It's just part of life. All right. Still compiling. Nearly done. Come on, computer, you just turned on a second ago. There we go. So, does this code work? This better not work. I'm going to be very angry if it work. If it, if it, if it works, because this does not work on Windows. Hmm? Oh, right. I have to set my config to enable some stuff. Slurp, where are you? Ethernet slurp enable equals true. So why isn't this working? Uh, it worked in Windows. Type in my password on my laptop. Slurp, why are you not working? Slurp disabled. No, it's enabled. What don't you understand? Configuration tool. Ethernet slurp. It's enabled. Ah. It's not enabled. The code wants it to be enabled, but it's not. All right, hang on a second. Let's fix this. I typed in the wrong password. There we go. Let's try this again. And let's hope this doesn't work. No, not like that. No. Why? That's even worse. Like, I didn't want to crash. Oh. Unhandled page fault. Why? 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 Where is the page fault happening? Hang on a second. Let's just do log message page fault one. Put a new line at the end or not. Page fault one, page fault two. Um, could it be here? I'm just sprinkling them around to see what runs and what doesn't. Page fault four. Page fault five. Page fault. Six, page fault seven. There, that should be fine. Let's see if that crashes. I'm logging into my Windows on an actual computer. All right, when do you crash in computer? Page fault seven. 
Alright, so it got to 7. Did I write any more? No. Um, it could be in here. 8. 9. Is it here? 10. 11. 12, 13, that should be fine enough, I think. Do I have any updates I can install on my Windows computer? I mean, the code didn't work, but this is working even less. Page fault 7. Is time is run not working? Is it something to do with OpenGL surf? Ah, hang on a second. Could it be to do with crappy OpenGL stuff? No, it's still the timers. All right. Timers, I. I'm not clearing the timers, am I? Hang on a second. This is all related to that error that I removed and then stopped worrying about immediately. All right. Mem set time is zero. Size of time is. Is that good enough? I might need to, is it called timers? Yeah, so let's just try doing that. Does this work? Yay. So let's see if this works. And if it doesn't, or if it does, I'm gonna be very angry. Okay. MTCP HT get. Okay, as you can see in this code, it doesn't work. But in the, see, it says connection failed, but in the code that I just wrote that's supposed to replicate this, it be broke. What gives? Did I just tidily write a bug in, my, in the select code? All right, hang on a second. Let's see. Let's try and just read this to see what the differences are. Select FD's max, that's ignored. Read, write, accept, select timeout. Um, yeah, callback. So let's see. Poll add, that looks about the same except for this FD's max thing, which I'm going to set to zero. I mean, it says it's ignored, but is it ignored? Slurp get revents. Is it this accept thing? Is it this junk here? Let's see, will this work now? Error sending HTTP request. So I've made a mistake in this code, but I don't understand it.
my computer crashed, can you divine the reason why? Um, check your keyboard for extra spaghetti. Okay, I'm very confused and very worried because the code that I've written here This code fails, but it seems identical, unless like it's to do with the timeout here. Is it this? Um, select, read, write, accept. Do I not zero the file descriptors? No, I do zero them. What the H? What the H? What the actual H? I don't... I don't. Could it be that this is something, to, this is not to do with select, but rather to do with... Uh, other junk? Could it be that my refactor of my code just fixed things by accident? Error sending HTTP request. Okay. This is fine. Um, I probably should be using tracing for this, but I mean, that's for when you have when you're trying to break things, this is, hmm. Poll add registered. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna git add ethernet slap. Um, git checkout b. Whip slappy five. Wait, which branch is this? Check out B. Whip slappy five broke. Get. Why did it add dosbox.exe? No, it didn't. WTF. And let's check out our slurpy five branch again. And let's. Copy Ethernet slurp.cpp. And we're going to do a side by side comparison. And we're going to git checkout whip slurpy5 broke Ethernet slurp.cpp. And we're going to vim diff the Ethernet slurp. Ethernet slap shit dot cpp. All right, so uh, it's probably not that. Let's just look at the part with the the select code. So get packets. In my new get packets, um, wait, what? Get packets clears the polls? Oh no, it does here. So poll clears. Ah. It didn't add, I didn't add the register, did I? Is that the bug? It's kind of weird that that's the issue because that's the code where I added the registered support. Um,
let's check out the Baroque branch and try fixing it. Um, and let's just edit the ethernet.cpp, uh, sorry, let's vimdiff this, oops, oops, yeah, we want to delete the back file there, ethernet.slurp.cpp, good, wait, what? All right, so somehow, oh, okay, so let's just def this. And let's see, so this is the working code on the right. This is the, no. Okay, this is the working code on the right. Does that add registered ones? It doesn't. My working code is broken. What the heck? Okay, I'm even more confused. Polls add registered, polls add registered. It doesn't add the registered stuff. So I found a bug in my code. It doesn't add registered file descriptors. Why not? Why did I not do that? That's a bug. So is my registered FD code the thing that's causing the problem? Uh, slap FD install, time around. <gasps> that's also not setting if the poll failed. And that should be less than zero. Yeah, so that's two issues there that I see. The expiry time there is an issue. Because that should actually be in milliseconds. The FD set stuff should be the same though. Real events. Okay, I'm getting mind flooded by this. I'm finding too many bugs. Okay. Poll add. So let's find a poll add. Poll add. Snap events. And so this is what we have for a poll add. So what's poll add here? Just paste this in, put it a line lower, a line lower. So that's about the same, yeah. And then there's the trace and then it returns. So that should be fine. Poll add looks fine. Get slurp prevents. Uh, what? Please don't tell me. Why is that now not working? I'm getting too confused. I need to slow down. 
and just try and get this broken code working so I can understand why it's broken. All right, DOS junk. So poll add, poll get revents. That looks about the same. So it would probably have to be in either polls poll or something. Let's see, is this working now? Oh, so what, what is the bug? Is it because I didn't pass the return value? So let's undo some stuff. We'll do that and we'll do that and we'll see if that was the bug all along. This very obvious bug. And then maybe we'll have Windows support. That'd be cool, huh? That'd be kicking it. Radical. No, does that mean my registered file descriptor code was causing the issue? Polls add registered, was that the issue? Groovy, yeah, that's exactly. Unfortunately, that's not said in Sonic Adventure 2, so as far as I'm concerned, it's not cool. Lame. I don't think Sonic says that either. Whoops. You use the wrong slash in DOS, it get mad. Ah, so adding, adding registered polls breaks it. So what does poll add registered do? It just adds polls. What's the issue? I just want to grill. All right, well, let's investigate this in the uh, prime code. I don't know what Sonic says. I know what he doesn't say though. So let's see, if I fix my code, will it break it? Polls add registered. So that would actually be, you'd want it to be polls clear, polls, and registered. If I can spell it properly, and let's run make. Uh, 
and if this breaks, then I'm going to be confused but happy. <gasps> it breaks it. Does that break it on Linux too? Oh crap, I think I know what's happened. I don't want to get too sweary, but I think Paul's ad register is just absolutely I don't know how to fix it if that's what's breaking it. So let's just dunk this in the code here. Does this break on Linux too? That'd be cool, wouldn't it? I wouldn't have to debug this Windows thing. Where's my windy windows? Ah, uh, Linux, my Linuxy Linuxy. Let's see if this works. So, uh, sorry, mtcp, htget.exe, http, google.com. It works in Linux, but I think that might be by accident. We'll see. Um, I think uh, it's such a weird thing. Okay, so hang on a second. Let's just see what happens here. So when we add it, it adds it to, the, it sets it in the FD set, poll add. You know what? We should be able to tell just from the traces what's happening. All right, let's see. Poll add 204, poll add. No, we can't tell, can we? Hmm, polls add registered. Is slurp, is this a bug in slurp? Hmm. Let's trace this. Let's say poll register poll register, and then we'll put the file descriptor there. And then we'll just do poll unregister here. And we'll see what happens. I think what's happening is that it's adding a file descriptor and then the file descriptor is getting, uh, it's going out of use, so then it's trying to select some invalid descriptors. Let's see. Error reading HTTP headers. So, okay, let's go to the Win32 log. Let's look for registered. Sorry, register. 
Um, what? Oh, I put it in the wrong, in the wrong code. Why? Why do I have two, uh, the Windows code and the Linux code open and I keep just doing it wrong? I'm not very smart today. Maybe it's the Windows XP theme that's just destroying my brain. Okay, run. Yes, oh no indeed. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. If it's the last thing I do. So that fails. You believe in me? Thank you. Okay, so that's fine. Register. Poll register. Po poll unregister. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it would be adding that. And then. Um, ex what? That's not a file descriptor. That looks like. What have I done here? That looks like an error. Ally, I, poll register, hang on. That should be long, long integer. And I think file descriptor, is that just an int? Let's just check the warnings here. Long int, long int. So the clock's messed up as usual, but we have a really weird integer here, like what the heck? That's not a file descriptor or a socket. That's like way too big. Hang on a second. Rip clock. Why are we getting such weird um, register poll FD I? Okay, so it's got an int file descriptor there. Is it giving me trash file descriptors? Because like all the proper ones here are like 208, 204. And it's giving me trash file descriptors and that might just be destroying the select. Tracer. We'll put that at the top of the file. <coughs> Slurp, are you giving me trash file descriptors? What the H? Make sure to gargle your tea. Okay, let's run. Hot? No. Hot tea. No, it was actually pretty cold. I'd get more, but I'm not allowed to. It's like more than three cups a day of that stuff is like poison. And when I had three cups a day for like a week, I just, my body felt so sick. So it's like, it's a trade-off. It's it's special occasions like streaming. Yeah, what's up? I mean, alcohol is like a poison too, isn't it? Why do you keep drinking? Well, I'm not drinking it often enough to get the poison this time. And it tastes good. Get some green tea? No, absolutely not. Okay. Register. And it's got a number, really big, another really big number. So what is this number? And let's double check that printf isn't telling me that this is the wrong value. Argument three has type int.
wait, format ally, is that from now? Hang on a second. Format ally expects argument of type. Oh yeah, so I have fixed that, I believe. Let's just save that and check that there's absolutely no errors here. Okay, so what is up with this number? What's it in hex? What's it in binary? What? Why is it giving me such a really big number? It's interesting because it's like it's at the bottom of the page. Wait, so poll register. Yeah. And I'm guessing that's just confusing it. So what is going on here? Let's let's check slip source code. Four nine thirteen. What's that? Is that a virus? Um, whatever, I don't care. I'll check for viruses later. I'll install AVG. Um, where am I going? Where am I going? Okay. DOS garbage fire. Slurpy. Noob slurp. Source. File. Open in terminal. Get normal T? Nah. Um, so, register fd, sorry, not git grep, just regular grep, register, unregister poll fd, register poll fd, so, is this a Windows bug? Because it seems like it works on Linux, right? Unless, let's, no, let's confirm that. Let's see what it, like, let's just see if it, what we, what, what it registers on Linux. DOSBox. Ah, uh, run. Hmm. Oops, again I did the wrong slash. Thanks, DOS. So that works. So what file descriptors did it register on Linux? Let's see. Poll register. 19. Okay, that seems reasonable, but on Windows it doesn't. It doesn't. Okay, um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to assume uh, that on Windows it's broken. Um, that seems logical, right? But how do we... We can't do that, can we? Um, so what we'll do is we'll just do a quick if def on Windows. If not def. Fuck Windows, no one uses it, yeah. So let's try this. It's such a weird bug, but okay. Maybe I'll report it to the Slurp people and they'll be like, ah, oh, we didn't test on Windows. Oh, I don't know why they're birds in this situation. Oh. Okay, so where's my select? If 
FD greater than select FD values, yeah. So that should actually be select FD's max um, select max FD. Okay. And plus one. Why? What's up? That was an American accent. I did it. Dear God Christ, no. I can't deal with that. Okay. Now you know what I sound like in American. Speak American. No, that's not American enough. All right, Ethernet. Slap dot h else int select max fd uh, that's also a bug here um hmm. <clears throat> that might be a bug i'm not sure we'll see now you know what I sound like in American. Great, let's go. Uh, war stuff. Let's do war. I vote in the house to do war. Bug hunter jokes. <laughs> no, but not the like British um, colonist explorer clothes. That's what I would be wearing for hunting bugs. All right, let's see. Is this gonna work? Oh, it works. So that kind of works. And you're probably like, kind of. What what issue? Um, and I'll tell you what issue. We don't have air or hop here. So I don't know what to do for these. So we're just gonna have to, um, hmm. What I will do now is I'm actually going to just save all this and then we shall see if it works on Windows React OS. I don't know, it should work fine. I mean, select has been around forever. So let's see, slip poll error. So how do we know if there's an error? Like an error on a socket. Because if we go to slurps code, we do grip poll error. Poll error. Pull out or pull error, pull error, pull error, pull error. It seems like it doesn't actually need to know about errors because whenever it's checking um, here, it checks for other things as well. And what about hub? Yeah. So hub and error seem optional in quotes so hmm let's see a po option optional pointer to a set of sockets to be checked for errors so accept errors so what's poll pre then URG data. What? Okay, so that's OOB data. So pull that. Pull pre should be OOB data. So this is actually wrong. So what we will do is we'll figure out a way to check for that. Um, 
what I will be doing right now though is uh, let's check the the MinGW build for um, how it builds the low end version. Build MinGW2, build MinGW low end. So what flags is that? SDL1. Uh, junk, trash. Okay. So out of band data, we'll want to figure that out. Why is Cos sending me Catboy stuff all the time? I don't understand. What, what is it? Just accidentally checked my Mastodon and there he is, just... Ugh. Okay, I gotta be right back to use the bathroom, so I'll uh, see you in a second. It didn't work. Didn't friggin' work. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Let's read this. Oh. This is gonna be a bit of a long stream. So I hope you're ready for those, uh... Yeah, I'm just checking that. My Twitch stream preview froze. Alright. So we need to suss out these extras quick piss yeah did you wash my hands um be right back no i'm just kidding of course i washed my hands what's wrong with you okay so out of bound data um how do we figure that out Good boy, yeah. Actually, the first thing I want to do is just go to my Linux stuff and trace for when I actually get a hop or out of data. Since I've figured out, um, you think Cos is trying to cat pill me? Like, hang on, if we just go to If we go here, no, I didn't get it. Is it there a dot in his name for some reason? No, there's an underscore, of course. Someone must have taken Cosros, right? So, so if we go here, yeah, so he's like, ah, oh, stream starts good. So if we look in his toots and replies, he's just sending me Catboy stuff, like Catboy gas transform and society. What's up with that? I don't understand. And they were just saying Catboy, Animu, and other Catboy stuff. I, I don't get it. He's been messaging me about it too. I don't, is there a Catboy anime? I'm out of the loop. I just need to understand this so I can connect with my friends better. I'm like, I feel like a dad that doesn't know what Pokemon is but wants to connect. Like, what's a... What's a cat boy? So we're going to see if we get pre air or hop. Poll pre. And then we're just going to do the, the FD. You, I'm a cat boy? No! I don't want that. I have a cat on my bed right over there. She's laying on her back. It looks really strange. I hope she's not like having a heart attack or something. You okay, cat? Yeah, she's not looking at me. Okay, so this should all be IDX, obviously. I don't know why I don't just change it, change the variable name semantically. Okay, so let's see if on Windows, uh, on Linux, we get these special events that we care about so much. 
And if so, if not, how do I reproduce them so I can test on Windows and see what happens? So let's see, let's run. I should join her on my bed. It's not time for sleep. So we've got nothing here. So if we do um, mtcp htget google.com and then what about jukid.org nothing hmm how do I how do I figure this out? I need to simulate these things. Okay, let's try DNS test name jukia.org. No, that's not happening. Lay down on your back so strange people who give you food can rub your tummy. Absolutely not. Um ping? Can I ping things? No, um, so this is troubling. Uh, what about netcat? Let's try and just do a quick get 80. Oh, IP address port. I have to use the IP address. I can't use the name, okay. There, get slash whatever. So it's really not, it's not giving me any uh, conditions where those are set. Oh, here we go, poll air and poll up. So is that when the program ends? You know what, I'm actually just gonna be very careful here and flush um, the file so it doesn't cache. Because that might be uh, impeding my progress. So let's open up this thing again. You okay, cat? Yeah, you okay, cat? God, poor cat's probably developing dementia or something. Meowing all the time, pooping on the floor. Uh, I still love you though, cat. All right. She's a cat. No, you don't understand. She's been a cat for a while, but this is new. Can I actually... Um, SSTP. God. I'm probably gonna have to censor some of that stuff. Uh, let's see. Grab DOS box. No, no, it's not working. Okay. Um, so how did we create that issue before? Does it happen if we reboot the guest machine? Reboot guest system. Reset virtual machine. No. Hmm. Hmm. Let's close DOSBox now. Quit. Nope, nothing there. So, there was a poll air and there was a poll hub somewhere. So, we just need to figure out what I did that caused that. Oops. 
So let's try that again. All right, MTCP, it might have been with netcat. So let's go netcat target jokia.org 80. Let's get that. Okay, obviously netcat didn't set the host. All right, now let's uh, MTCP slash DNS test. Now I'm aware that it could just be because it's like timing out. Would you wear a maid dress with cat ears and program? Can I pretend you are? Uh, you can pretend, yeah. You can pretend anything, buddy. All right. Um, dear. So it still hasn't said anything. Hmm. Do I just have to wait? Does it, is that, cause that what happens when it times out? Hang on, I have a solution to this. So we make a netcat thing there and then we do Where's my netcat? 127.0.0.1 Hi. Um, hello there, simp. And then we do control C and that should have done something. Or maybe, maybe if I have to, if I kill the netcat process Whoa, what's up? What was that? Pole air, pole hop. Oh, is this... Hmm. Is that when a socket fails to open? That we get a pole air and a pole hop? Yeah. Why is that? Okay. Now, what about when the socket is in the middle of doing stuff and it just kills it? So that connects, and we go pkill nine netcat. Uh oh. What? Um, can someone tell me if the stream is still going? That'd be cool. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, so that actually just killed my remote VNC connection. So uh, now I can't see anything. That's fine. I didn't need to see anything anyway. Um, let me just quickly debug this. Cannot listen to port 5900. All right, hang on a second. You're thinking about eyes? Um, SSTL. N. TN. Gosh, all right, why is this broken? SSH is giving me an issue. I think because I have to kill the SSH. I don't have control masters set. Connection refused. So did I kill Tiger VNC too? Oh no. 
That's not good. Alright, hang on a second. I might have to, ah, uh, this is the worst. Okay, hang on, does it work on this computer? Rest in peace. Cannot listen to port 5900. Okay, what have I done? I understand this is extremely trashy and boring, but, uh, I ran, I killed Netcat and that killed my, uh, my VNC connection. Um, and so I guess I just deserve death. So port. Is Tiger VNC not running anymore? No. Okay. So I have to start my freaking VNC thing again. Um, config, auto start, X11 VNC. So what do I do for that? I just run this. X open display failed. All right, hang on a second. God, I should have been ready for this. But I just didn't expect. I know, cat. I know. I know. Okay. We're back. I'm back. Why did... What the heck just happened there? I ran PQL9 Netcat, so... Is Netcat running? I guess. So what we're going to do instead. Well, I guess that didn't give a pole huff, did it? All right. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to. Oh, oh, DOSBox, don't resize like that. That's weird. Socket open failed. Pole up and pole air seem like the same kind of thing. Hmm. Let's just search. I know I can. I know what pole air is. That makes sense, right? But pole hop is the one that's tricky. Pole hop means fin has been received and sent. Pole air means the socket got an asynchronous error. That means RST. TCP send RST. All right, how do we test that? I can send back an RST with this IP tables command. Okay, I might try that. Command line utility to send TCP RT. This looks kind of like something that'd be used for a virus. All right. Ha. So, pole hop means it's hung up and pole hop means that the connection's been closed, I guess, and that would also be an error. I guess, depending. Pole hop without pole air. Uh, uh, uh. Pole hop means the socket is no longer connected and TCP this means fin has been received and sent. Okay. Pole air means that it's got an error. Okay. So that means the socket is still open, but it's got an error. And I have to use get sock opt to get the error. Okay. 
All right. This is very vague. It depends on the operating system. That's a good point. So let's see. There's no uh, windows there. Test for both pull in and pull up. All right, so win 32, pull air. Let's see how they do it. WSA pull FD. Oh, that's right, because they have a pull thing. All right, so now we're gonna get to the, the sticky stuff, I guess. We can't use poll FD because that uses WSA poll. Um, let's go back to select and see what we have. Select function returns the number of sockets meeting the conditions a set of macros. Blah, 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 blah. Readability can also indicate a request to close the socket has been received. The presence of out of bound data will be checked if the socket option SSOB line. All right. So read will check all that, I imagine. Accept FDs identify sockets that are about to, that are to be checked to the presence of OOB data or any exceptional. Okay. The socket, uh, so error can just include whatever, but it can also include out of band data. But that's good, that's what we want, that's what poll pre actually is. So it's just error and hop now that we have to figure out. Hmm, okay. Let's see. So we can kind of trigger those. So poll air. Wait, we don't have poll air, do we? We have to separate poll pre and poll air, I think. Because we only have poll pre. Because this is the wrong, this is not the win32 code. Okay, whatever. So, I'm trying to really do this so it will work on Windows XP. So, how do we check if poll pre means that there's an error? So, we're going to have to check read FDs and accept FDs. We're going to have to check... Um, what's happened. So how do we check for O out of bound data? There's also the whole WSA events thing, which I actually kind of like a bit more. Maybe we can try that, but I don't know if it works on Windows XP. Let's have a peek at the code that I wrote for that, because it seemed to have solved most of the problems. Oh my God, it's so hot in here. I can't find my freaking up on my keyboard, there we go. Wait, no, it'd be, it'd be on uh, the carry one, wouldn't it? I'm not dead and I'm not Ed. I'm just melting. Okay. So 
So for this, we used WSA event select. And then we just asked for some events. Um, so we could try that. Hmm. WSA event select. Is that in Windows XP though? Would you take the catboy pill if it meant all your programs were bugless and perfect? No. So WSA event select seems to like MSDN here is unhelpful because it's like, this has been available since Windows Vista. And I'm like, I know. Windows 8.1, but it's been around longer than that, hasn't it? Let's also check this code. Um, does this also add registered? You know, I might actually just check out that code. Git checkout. How did I do that before? I might just copy that code because it might have been broken because of the frigging registered event stuff and it might have been fine otherwise. I suppose we could try implementing it here. I just want to know what Windows XP version does it come on? It looks like it's from Windows XP. Okay. So. You know what? Let's just check out that code. I'll write the command for it. Let's commit this code first though. More test. And uh, no, actually no. Git reset source. Git add source missed to Ethernet slab. Yeah, I don't want to bring all the junk in here. And then we're going to do git checkout remotes. Ah, this command line syntax. I use too many shells. Git checkout. Um, and then we would do git checkout that. And then we do source misc ethernet that uh, God, it's there's O's in there. Hang on, I need to focus. It's so hot in here. I'm okay. I'm turning on my fan. I'm sorry, everyone. I have to fan. Okay, it's negatively affecting my my brain. All right, here we go. So I'm torn on whether I want to just copy the code from it manually or just check it out. You know what, I'll copy the code. Um, let's read this. Um, and let's just, we might need to fix this up a bit. And then we'll just undo the read for the file. And then I realize I did it in the wrong repository, of course. Okay, I'm not mad. There we go. Uh, Here we go. Let's 
It would be whip slurpy carry. Um, origin whip slurpy carry. All right, let's try making that. And I need to define the WinNT version thing. No. What? What's happened? I didn't check out the Ethernet stuff. Uh, this is a little bit trashy, but that's okay. Ethernet slurp. Wait, no, Ethernet slurp dot. I don't know. It would be both PCAP slurp and cpp and h there we go and then we define winnt ver as 601 i think that that would do it let's see will this work and then there's the timer thing Ethernet peak, uh, Ethernet slurp.h. So I'm guessing for some reason this version of NinjiW doesn't like me just emptying an array like that. That's okay though. Um, let's go when we do the clear. Clear. Yeah, let's do. Wait, no, timers. So I'll have to do that in the constructor, won't I? And we'll have to remove the enabled stuff here. Want to become famous by followers, primes, and viewers on click.ru? I don't know. I'm not cut out for that. I'm famous. Yeah. I got bots. Ah, that's how it works. When you're famous like me, you get bots. Um, speaking of which, Cos is streaming tomorrow night. That's good, right? That should be just be timers. All right, so this should not work. But it should work if I, uh, INET PTN. P uh, uh, what's WinNT version? What's the macro again? I forgot it already. Win, win 32 WinNT. You know, you don't have to spend your channel points. We can always all save up. It's like 60K. Um, 60K equals like an hour of singing, I think. So if we do each, like six of us do 10K each, it'll be fine. I mean, he may get suspicious, but don't tell him. All right, so let's see if this kind of works. Hmm, you say. So this is the code that I had that worked better than the other code. And I think it kind of just is more Windowsy. So let's see. MTCP HTGET. HTGET. What? MTCP HTGET. .exe, HTTP .org. error sending HTTP request. Sometimes it would work though. And I think that's because of this registered junk. So let's 
remove that and we'll see we'll see what happens then. Uh, God, I'm 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 phasing out. Did I just run the window uh, the Linux version? No, I wouldn't have done that. That would have worked. Okay, let's see if this works. This would also crash. Error sending HTTP request. It's trash. The code I wrote is trash. Oh my god, it's trash. It's absolute trash. And I'll show you why. If I run into terminal, it's going to complain about bad file descriptors. But, I think there is room for using this in conjunction with the select method. I think, maybe. Um, source, you know, mtcp, htget.exe, http, jukia.org. Oh, it gets return events. Wow, um, so that might actually kind of work. Let's just have a look at this again. So ret, ret2, we enumerate that events, we close the event. Re events, I, re event. Re event, um, fd. So why is that not working? Hmm. That seems strange. This should be working and it would be good for this to work. So let's add a trace here. Get slurp ribbons. Revents, revents, and IDX. So let's see. You might have to just run this in a terminal. Let's see. Because it seems like it understands that there is events happening and ready. But it's not s sending them? So it gets events too. Yep, so it is actually finding the events. But, uh... It doesn't care. Now, I think the reason for that is something to do with the semantics not matching. Would I eat a pickled chicken McNugget? Absolutely not. I don't think the semantics of this thing here um, really kind of work with what select is. But hey, we might be able to use it to kind of figure out, um, we might be able to actually use this code in conjunction with the select code I wrote to figure out what the actual events are. So let's write that to two, git branch, git checkout, git reset head, git checkout head source. So 
So let's do this and let's read two. And then we have this junk here. So what we'll do is when we're getting the slurp events, we'll check if it's in there and then we'll um, grab the actual event here. So if it's in read FDs, or if it's in write FDs, or it's in that, or rather, if it's not all of that, then let's return zero. Otherwise, we're going to try and get some actual events here. So let's see how well this goes. So it should have the socket there. Since we're just returning that, we can do IDX for that. Socket event, bad FD, that should never happen. Um, enum network events, net events, yep, 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 yep. Windows events. So that's actually going to be a data structure that I need to check. Um, no, we don't. We have to do slurp events here. Okay. And let's see if this kind of works. Bad FD. Um, that would be IDX. If net event mask equals zero, we want to return zero for that. So no events. And then I need to add another bracket for that. Okay. We're getting there. Primary expression before if. Why? Why would you expect that? Oh, there's another if here? God. I'm not good at programming. You drunk some pickle juice and you regret it? Um, okay. I'm not going to try and pickle juice shame you, but uh, what were you thinking? You thought it wouldn't burn? Well, you thought wrong. Uh, is this going to work? Oh. CJ! Oh, my dog! Okay, it works. Would I eat that? Kool-Aid pickles or cooler cools enjoyed by children in parts of the southern United States are created by soaking dill pickles in a mixture of Kool-Aid and pickle bind. Ah, uh, I mean, I don't like Kool-Aid. So that actually works. We have code that work. Um, I'm not sure why it takes so long to shut down. Is that a regression caused by me? So. Let's 
So let's see what we have here. Oh, a message popped up under everything else. So we're getting there. So it's kind of a hybrid um, select max FD equals FD greater. Wait, no. If FD greater than select max FD, then F, um, select max FD equals FD. Ah, uh, we don't even need that. This is Windows. Windows don't care. I'm writing Windows code, aren't I? Source misc Ethernet slurp dot h. Delete that. Would I eat that? No. Would you become a Windows dev? No. Absolutely not. So let's see. We have this code here that will poll, add polls, check that there's like actual stuff to be written to. And then we have our slurf events we create an event. What's sock do? Do I discriminate against the non fast community? No. So we have some asserts here. We have just a whole bunch of junk here. Um, if net mask equals that, equals zero. So let's actually check that we're getting the right slurp events here because WSA event select. Are you a prophophobe? Propophobe? A phobia of proprietary software? A little bit. So let's see. You're developing for Windows right now. No, it's fine. Just ignore it. So if we have read, if we have write, out of bounds, then we want to give poll pre. If we have a close, then we would give hop. What about errors? We need the poll error though. There's also some other stuff. All right, FD right. Oh, that's right. I just realized something. Um, this messes up the sockets. That's why I didn't use it. All right, uh, let's just trash all this. Uh, I don't have big enough. This actually breaks my sockets and my heart. Let's try and just not use that. So let's try and figure out what events we need. So what, what events does Paul have? Paul pre has an exceptional event, there is out of band. Okay, that's fine. Poll up, poll error. Poll error means the right end of a pipe when the read end is closed. Oh, no, error, or an error condition. So 
So Paul Air So hang up um, the Piper stream socket indicates that the peer closed its end of the channel. So let's do that with um, I don't know, we're gonna do hup equals closed. Um, and then we have to do pre equals out of band data or exceptional condition and error equals error. So let's try and suss those out. If your girlfriend had a Lamborghini, would you fall in love with it? No. Okay. Back to the select. The thing with WSA events is that it makes the socket non-blocking and I don't want to do that if I don't have to. Okay. So accept FDs is errors. Readability can request, can indicate that a request to close the socket has been received. So for receive, we might want to peek it. So peek receive for a hub. Not even at least little kiss on the weekend when she wasn't looking. I don't want to have sex with my car or any car. I, why? So IOB might actually be errors too. So how do I check for IOB? Uh So check OOB and drop error. All right, we're getting close here. So how do we check if there's out of bounds junk? Um, so Yeah, we'll just return slurp our events and stuff. So we need to check that if um, those out of bound data, we need to uh, we need to check that it's okay. I mean, why do you put that there? Wait, what if you do poll for zero? Does that also? Upper limit. Okay, yeah, so that has the same semantics. Okay, so we need to check, we need to peek to see if it's been closed. For that, so I actually do have some code for that. Um, wait, does poll also do, does it set um, poll in? if the connection might be closed. There is data to read, okay. So no, you would also have to set. That would have to also reset um, whatever I just said. God, I'm getting confused. I that would have to reset um, 
That's not my code. That's why I couldn't find it. It would have to uh, reset in. So what we should actually probably be doing here is testing to see if um, for the values we're looking for. Except for these. So hop would be here and out of bounds would be here. Out of bound data. There we go. So now let's check for our hop stuff. So Read FB, read FD, wait. Read can also include out of bound data. Oh, only if OOB inline is enabled. Um, okay. Does Slurp care about that? Wait, is that a Windows thing? Looks like a Windows thing. Linux. I didn't spell Linux right. I didn't spell it right. I, why can't I spell Linux? Okay, so it's a regular socket thing. Poll. Don't laugh at me, okay? Something's wrong with me. Okay. Wait, why didn't that... Uh, out of band data, out of band data. It's possible to peak. Okay, so we're going to have to peak. And I guess. I don't know too much if you should also peek and check for out of bounds. I don't know. Okay. I'm just cute. Please no. So let's check this commit here, which did have peeking. If I can right click properly. Peak. Peak. Ah, so that's how I did it here. But I didn't peak. Okay, so that's what I'm supposed to do. So what we'll do here is we'll, um, I guess, int buff eight. Then we'll peek there. And if it's if it can't read, then it would be an error, I guess. What what is this code? Okay. That's really weird. I guess I did it wrong there. So let's see, what does receive say on Microsoft? Winsock receive. So, if no error returns, then it's fine. So 
So we actually want to just check So if receive doesn't equals socket error, then it should just be fine with the input. Otherwise, we're going to have to switch through. Oh no, I'm using the wrong bracket style here for DOSBox. Oop. Else we're going to have to switch. We're going to have to do a big switch. WSA get lost. Error. Do I need to reset that before calling it? So let's see. So if we switch here and then we do default, then we'll actually have to set this to be an error, which is weird, but okay. We'll have to set the error flag. Okay, whatevs, um, break, otherwise we're going to have to check for errors that interest us. Socket is not connected, is that what I want? Um, so HUP is that they close the connection remotely. So socket is not connected. What does that mean? Oh, it's not going to tell me here, is it? Is it? So what does not con mean? Socket is not connected, no address. Of supplied. So that's not it. Enet reset. All right. Um, shut down. Is that what I want? No. Um, con about it? Connection reset by peer. Yes. Con, WSA e con reset. So that's what we want. Now we can just check this. Else, if WSA get last error equals WSA econ reset, then we'll put the uh, slurp events epoll hub. Otherwise, it'll just be an error. That looks reasonable. say econ reset <coughs> um, 
right FDs, you know, and I'll just put that in its proper place for now. And so we need to accept FDs. Is this old code? Why is that broken? So now we need to check for out of bounds data. So let's see, application can use iOcatel socket or WSI Ocatel to determine whether any more out of bounds data is there. All right, so let's just try this and see if it breaks everything. Cannot convert int to car. Int to car. Why did I use int for that buffer? WSAE con reset, so that's got to be two ends. Select FDs. We can get rid of that. Change that to zero. Oh, it worked. I solved the errors and that compiled, but does it run? Let's see, run Win32. Nothing seems to have crashed. We'll see. Okay, that worked. So, what we will do is we will add, we will actually start cutting down all these um, error things, because they work. And we will also do slurp events, poll hub, And then we'll put the FD there. Read poll error. Okay. And so let's see if it actually gets any hops, which should happen. No, it's not FD, it should be IDX. And let's see if that works. So it's tail F So let's see. Will we get any hops in our trace? So that connection created, that's good. So how did we do this before? I had netcat running, 8080. And then we did, I don't know, let's just try MTCP um, netcat target 127.0.0.1, target, ah, so not, not two dash, it's just one dash. And then we kill that and we'll say hop. No, that's not good. Why not?
It's okay, Jukes, you'll get it. Aw, oh, thanks. You believe in me? Um, okay. So it's not ever telling us that we have, um, except poll error. Hmm, okay, let's try this again. Let's quit that. And let's run out little netcat and let's run slurp again. Get initialized, that's good. mtcp dot Let's try google.com. Um, then let's try the netcat. What's up? Hi there. Cancel. Nothing. So in that case, does it also say that it can write? What's happening here? Sleepy jerks? Nah. So let's see, does it actually trigger the read thing? Because I'm not getting a socket error. Receive or return zero on a cleanly closed connection or negative one on an aborted one? What? Are you kidding? What? Zero. Uh, I guess that's implied. Um, int receive int red if red. Um, so if it read more than zero, or if red equals zero, that seems right. So if it read more than zero, then there's data in, and if it didn't read zero, if it read zero, then that means there's no data, so we probably close the connection. 
or if the error says that it's econ reset, otherwise there's an error. That makes logic sense. I mean, I'm not sure, I didn't know that read would just return zero, but it makes sense for your little reedy loopies. Okay, let's see. Let's do this. Did I run the right one? Yeah, okay, so... Um, mtcp nk.exe target 127.0.0.1 Oh wait, it happens when um, it happens when I try to connect to something that doesn't exist. Socket open failed. Why am I not getting an error for that? All right, let's just do the netcat thing. Test, test, nothing. Why? We're getting a lot less events than I would expect. It should be spewing stuff. At least input stuff. Something's not right here. Something is not right at all. Could it be because select is failing? Let's see, maybe wine doesn't ignore something. Something's not working here. I'm not getting flooded with output. What? I forgot to put a new line and it didn't flush. And I didn't think about it. Poor Jukes. I deserve this. Okay. Let's start DOSBox again. No, I deserve this. This is exactly what I deserve. My arrogance of writing code and expecting it to work without looking at it. God, I'm gonna get fired for this one. All right. So we get pull in, pull, we get pull in, we get pull out. And then we get pull in, then we get a hop. That's good. I like me a pull hop. So let's see. H, so let's do netcat.exe. Please don't, please don't pat the jukes. Okay, I'm already getting mastered on withdrawal from all my... Mastered... Uh... Look. Look, so that works. This is all working pretty well. So it says... 
there's stuff to read, then when you write stuff, it doesn't say it. So that must be, hmm, poll out must be for when you're serving something. Uh -uh. I'm not sure. We'll have to see about that. People will need to run some applications to test it. And then, poll up. Yay! Read equals zero or W. You know what? Read equals socket error. There we go. So we have pull up working. We have out probably working. Now we just need to figure out errors. So, if we get an exception, we just need to check that we don't have out-of-bounds data. So, how do we do that? Out-of-bounds data. Wait, something, I read something about this being used for IOCATAL. Is it WSA IOCATEL? Well, that looks big and spooky. I don't want that. Hey, cat, what do you think? Uh, so, select out of bounds data is for is available for reading. So we really need to figure that out so we can differentiate the error. You know what? Let's have a quick a quick break and let's copy over Let's quickly copy over um, stuff into React OS and try it. I don't think React OS implements any Windows 7 APIs or things like that, but we'll see. Come on, load. Is it eighty eighty or eight thousand? Let's try eighty eighty. No. So it must be something else. 8,000. Here we go. Um, let's go to source. And let's get this dosbox.exe and we'll see if it works. 65 megabytes. Quick 65 megabyte download. Save it to the desktop, yes please. And we'll see how much this crashes. I might also just copy the config. I might need to disable some stuff. So it's all statically linked. I don't have an actual Windows XP machine to test this with. Yet.
Do I want the cat boy pill? Look, we've talked about this. OOB. IO Cattell socket. Let's look at this again. Socket S. Socket get opt OOB. That might also be what we need. Linux check socket OOB. Out of band data. Uh oh. Oh no, it didn't freeze. Wow, React OS, you're doing pretty good. You're right, it's more fun like this. Or what do you mean? GNU, your documentation and your your stuff is all right. <sighs> If this seems a bit confusing and worthless, that's because it mostly is. Okay. So getting out of band data looks difficult. I don't know if I'm cut up for it. Uh, I'm not going to need to, I think I'm going to need to, because uh, this is going to probably crash. I'm going to need to set some configurations. Or I might just test it. I might just ask someone with a Windows machine to test it. Crash, crash, crash. Do it, do it. You won't. Coward. I don't know if it's like actually loading up. No. Dot part. Excuse me. No, I don't want to... I'm starting to regret installing PZIP. Ah, here we go. INET NTOP could not be detected. So, that's one bug. Why would it be using that? Huh. Wait, inet ntop, inet n to p. Does this mean slurp doesn't work on it? Hang on a second. inet n to p. Wait, does is this a slurp thing? Hang on a second. Um, no, go away, React OS. You've trapped me. All right, dos junk. N2P and of course Slurp is using INET N2P. Hmm. Great. Well, I guess that means we can use P to N properly. It just means it's not going to work in, uh, I don't know, old machines. So when was INET entropy introduced? It's not in Windows XP, so it would be in Windows Vista. Or would it be INET N to A? Do I want to go down the road of XP compatibility for this? Hmm. 
I shouldn't. I know, unless. No, I won't do that. Okay. So what? Let's remove this Windows XP code. And I'll worry about it. It can be someone else's problem. Probably mine. Wait, unless though. Hmm. Let's just, let's just see what, let's just see. I'm curious and it's going to bite me. Let's just, let's just see. I just want to see. So that's how we compile and install Slurp. Uh, could... Hmm. I might... You never know. Let's just see. Let's go to our DOS garbage file. Find Slurpy. Um, we're just gonna make clean. And then we're just going to export path equals home to here mxe user bin path. And then we're going to, how did I make it before? Uh, make cc equals, God, what was it? Target. What am I using here? MinGW? Yeah. Should I do this? No. But I'm going to anyway. I just want to see. I want to touch, that's all. I want to touch the live wires. Can I do that? What happened here? Oh, it can't deal with this, right. Move Slurpy home. Desktop home to here, desktop dust junk. Get shocked? No, please. I just want to grill. Wait, where am I? CD Slurpy. What? All right, CD Lib Slurp. I gotcha. Build, 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 build. Go, 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 go. So if we go here, and we'll have to make in a second, but maybe there's a chance. Is it P to N? CD source. Git prep win and t. So it defines it to be Vista. 
So what if we were to define it to be XP? What if we did that, huh? Win NT XP. Uh, XP is 501, isn't it? Windows XP, yeah, 501. Make clean. What if I were to clean? What if I were to try to compile now? Hmm. So inet ntop and inet p to n are like the only things. Okay, well, let's try. Inet ntop, inet p to n. Let's see where that is. That's in slurp, p to n. That reads DNS crap, damn. But wait, I can just copy my inet p to n thing in. That could work. I just want to see. I just want to see, that's all. And inet n top, what's that in Windows? Oh, what are you doing on the floor, cat? Windows XP, INET, and top. Inet N to A. So what if we do find Inet N top, Inet N to A. What if we do that, huh? So there's a, there's a six version. So that actually didn't fix it at all. In is TBD. So I might need to shim that. She's being cute? No. Wait, where did I put the... When I put my code on it, uh, P to N, I got to put it in the slurp file. Oh, so I put it in slurp.h. All right. So that actually goes in slurp.h. Um, what if I just do this and I put that in slurp. So that way I can implement it there. P to n. And let's see if that compiles kind of, and then if that does, I'll try and mock up a shim. N top. 
So end top is also broken. I could just comment that out for now. Let's do that. Screw it. Let's just IP version six. End top. Um, I just return. Um, yeah, I'll just return. And then in NDP table. Wait, no, that's just where I was. In ICMP6, I'll just return. There we go. So let's try making this again. Inet end top. Did I not remove it? Or is it still there? And that would be Inet end top. And this would also be a return thing. Okay, let's see this. Return with no value in NDP table. And ICPM six is still got end top stuff. I thought I searched for it. That should be all of it. Okay, so then we copy lib slurp dot a home oops home jukia mxe user lib um i think it might be there lib slurp no user lib it might not be in user it might be in i686 lib lib slurp all right so let's try this Did I close React OS? Yeah. Let's run you again. Okay, I gotta make that. There we go. So we'll see if this could work on Windows XP with a patch to slurp. And if it works on React OS, you know. Might as well work on everything. So that recompiled. Do I have my HTTP thing going still? Nah, yeah. There we go. Let's open up Chameleon. Yeah, you know what? Resume my last browsing session. Thanks for remembering. Um, source DOSBox X. And we're going to save that. It's going to ask us where to save it. Well, Where'd you go? Should I not have minimized that? Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Problem. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay. Let's open you back up. Does this not have like W yet or something? So let's go back here. We'll just put source at the end of the URL. Why are you saying no very loudly? Save link target as 
and we'll put it on the desktop. There we go. Bad things started happening, yeah. That's the response you give when bad things start happening, right? So what else? We gotta still do this out of band data stuff, I guess. I'm not gonna be able to test it, but at least we could you know, try in theory. Out of band. Out of band. So you can receive out of band data in receive. You get SIG URC if you want. Out of band. Message OOB and message peak. Uh, could I use that? Does anyone else use that? Is that a real thing? Ah. Uh. So how do you actually get, you can go out, cat. It's fine. Out you go, leave, leave. Okay. <laughs> so angry at my cat. All right, so um, let's search up C read TCP out of band data. Oh shit, Syrup Slushy followed me four hours ago. Thanks, Syrup Slushy. Uh, bit bit late there. Sorry. Um, uh, uh, read out of band data. I guess we could peek for out of band data, but how do you select for a, for a uh, exception? So do I just have to read it? I guess that's probably how you do it. Oh, open file. <gasps> oh my god, could it could it possibly be? Uh, let's get a command. Let's get a configuration going. Um have I got a configuration I can chuck over there? Um, DOS junk. Um, I'll just grab this configuration here and I'll put it in my DOS box Win32 folder. And we'll just grab that using Kmeleon. And we'll see if we can boot this without changing much. But it seems like all the links and stuff are found, so it could be that I just need to uh, uh, patch libslurp maybe? DOS 
taskbarx.x.conf. Save it to the desktop, please. Please. Alright, let's edit this with Notepad. Yeah, we have Notepad. So we want to do output would be surface. Uh, bit laggy, not gonna lie. So let's try this. Here we go. Oh, uh, it got my junk. All right, so what do we need? We need MTCP and the any 2000 code. So let's open with, no, I don't know what I did. It sounds like slurps working though. All right, open with React OS Notepad. Let's scroll down here, remove all that. So we need the any 2000 driver and um, MTCP. Could it be, could it be possible? MTCP. I wonder if we should just vendor in libslurp in that case to the build tree. I mean, I mean it's an option. Good news, everyone. Uh, we just need HTGET. Okay, so I have to download it on all of them. Standard binaries. Yep. Save that. And then we also need um, DOSBox any 2000. DOS any 2000 driver. Packet driver. Would I not have that laying around? I might. Here we go, it's probably here. It's probably here. You know, internet isn't fast in Windows. Oh, I can't click on that. Any 2000 packet driver. I should be searching that. Packet driver. Packet drivers for DOS. Should be here. Any 2000. Oh, there we go. So we got it, we got the drivers. Could it be possible? Is there a chance that we could have that delicious, delicious Windows XP support? Uh, awful. All right, let's try and dump some stuff on the desktop. So, packet driver there. Shit, I've got to make an NTP, NTCP configuration as well. Alright, no, I'm doing this. I'm wasting an hour doing this. Because it will give me mad street cred. Okay? And if I don't get mad street cred, I might as well just, I don't know, cry. Okay, sample configuration file. Oh, that's so good. Okay, so let's make a folder for DOS. Um, in you go. 
HG get any 2000 we go in the DOS folder and we also need the config Wait, did that not control control X in? I guess not. Go in. Go in. You believe in me? I'm so happy. And we need the configuration. Sample configuration. Okay, I guess I can't hover over the taskbar like that. You can't have everything. All right, could it be? Uh, uh, can I resize that? Do I dare try and resize it? Uh, no, that didn't work. Okay, so mount C DOS C drive. I can't read it all. Scalar, none. Toggle full screen. Ah, that gives us barely enough. Okay. So, move sample.config, mtcp.config, edit mtcp.config, packet int, host name, yep. IP address. All right, I have to download the DHCP as well. Cool. We're getting there. Okay, I don't know how to exit full screen, so I'll just exit DOS. Oh, this is painful. But you know, you didn't want pain, you wouldn't be using DOSBox. Okay, here we go. Video, toggle full screen. Mount DOS C. Mount C DOS. CD dot, uh, C drive, DHCP, set MTCP config equals uh, MTCP dot config. Could not set up packet driver. Okay, let's set this up. Packet driver zero times sixty int three. No, it's not working. It's not working. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. Alright, let's have a look at this configuration file. We might just want to set this manually. 2. Point something. 2.1. Or is it 10.0.2.3 for that? The host would be 10.0.0.2, I think. And the gateway would be 10.0.0.1. I can actually check, can't I? I can leave React OS and have it peek at uh, the default configs here. So it's 2.0, and what would host be? 2.2, yeah, so that sounds about right. Yeah, save it. Um, M HG get 
Your lease has expired. Please run DHCP. Um, what if I disable DHCP? Oh. Let's remove that. Alt file, save, alt file, exit. Error resolving. Okay, well, that's disappointing. Let's, I don't know, might as well run DOSBox in the command line just to see if there's any errors. Like, what's our slurp trace say? Slurp connection created. So it could just be that um, the code is not good enough to run on React OS. Um, DOSBox X. No, I want to run it with a log. I want to run it with the log. How do you not understand that? Um, log. Win run. There's no log is there. You, oh, hey, question. You're going to break your laptop? Nice. Fucking Windows is the disease of mankind. Why? What happened? Tell me your pain, bud. Imagine you paid for it. Yeah. I mean, what did you do? Did you do bad? I have sl any 2000 enabled yet. Slurps enabled. 10.3? That should be 2. The screen randomly flashes. There's no way to fix the Wi-Fi. Um, sounds like you've got bad windows. You've got a bad one. Okay, so every update makes it worse. Yeah, but that's part of the experience. Fresh install too. I mean, you're not sounding like a team player. Oh no. Wait, what IQ is it? Hang on, is it on three or five? That's on nine. Is it on five? Is that why it's not working? Why am I not checking this in another thing? Why am I not comparing this to like the actual proper DOS box? Okay, run. No, I can just read the configuration, can't I? Um, Nick base, Nick IQ5. That might explain why things are not working. Hey, Quasha, you might witness possibly the peak of my programming career. So strap in. This is where I peak. Let's see, does DHCP work? <gasps> Look at that. But, can I? Is it possible? Holy fuck, the madman did it. <gasps> it doesn't. It's not reading HTTP headers. No. 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 Why? Why? Uh, also, why? Let's look at the slurp trace. Nothing in there. Um. Not great. Why do we live just to suffer? 
I was just making sure that my code could work on uh, Windows XP. Well, this is NT 5.2, so I thought Reactos would be a good candidate. PZip, why did I install you if you're just going to zip everything I double click on? It's not okay. Okay, open it with React OS, please. Okay, I love that you can zip things. That's great. I don't need everything zipped. So what I would actually do is do mount C DOS set MTC config equals C drive MTC dot config any two thousand um, zero times sixty five. Um, DHCP, and let's just see if that's going to work. Well, not work, but you know, do stuff. Oh, I forgot to change the C drive, of course. Of course. Does this work? So htget google.com is not going to work, is it? Error reading HTTP headers. Okay, so that's something for a later date, maybe. I mean, I'm not sure. Um, it's unclear what the actual issue is there. I mean, I guess I could add some slurp debug stuff while I'm at it. Um, let's see. Oops. Where's my tracer? Um, let's see. I removed all my tracing text. Let's put that back. And then we'll just put slurp events, error, polls, poll. And then we just do ret. And let's make that. And I guess for out of bounds data, I'm just going to have to try and peek it if that's possible. Can tell this browser is a little bit old because it's got a kill flash icon in the toolbar. It's like it's done. 2021 flash is dead. As George Bush once said, mission successful or mission accomplished. That's what he said. Mission accomplished. We killed flash. So let's just see, receive, can we, can we peek for the out of band data? Can we do a little sneaky peek? You're going to stream some Genshin Impact? Nice. You hope your PC doesn't explode? Me too.
So in theory, this code should be what should be working. Let's just wait until my 50 megabyte DOS box thing. Yeah, see you later. My 50 megabyte DOS box build copies across. Application can use um, iCatel socket or WSA Catal. SIO cat mark. Okay, so is there anything here about out of bounds? He doesn't tell me how to use iCatel socket. Long command, command. So where are the commands? Here are the supported commands to use and it doesn't list them. All right. That's a lot of junk here. But surely it'll have a list of commands. Is that a, is I could tell socket a thing in Linux too? See our cat mark. Okay, let's try running DOSBox X and get some tracing. Maybe it'll be a small, simple bug. I wonder if it's a DNS thing, hang on. Uh, all right, let's abort that then. If it's a DNS thing, then that might just be because Slurp doesn't want Windows DNS stuff. DNS test. Alright. Just let me leave, please. Please refresh. Okay. So let's close pzip because it's going to haunt me if I keep it open. Uh, where's my DOS box? Why does this not update? The, the desktop needs to be updated for me to use it. Okay. Control or F11. Oops. Toggle full screen. Okay, so DNS. It's not here. I, I forgot to put it in the folder. Okay. Well, let's just try HTTP get jukyu.org. Our reading HTTP headers. That froze. What about? Uh, sorry, IP version four, please. Is that froze? Okay. HTTP get one oh seven point one six seven point eight one point ninety. Error reading HTTP headers. So something else is going on there. It's not a DNS thing. Let's check for our slurp trace.
Paul's Paul is giving errors all over. Wow. That could explain why things aren't working. Um, so what if we just, hmm, read poll error, poll in with file descriptors, negative one might make sense though, so that's not necessarily a bad thing, read poll in, read poll, poll in, is there any pull out? No, it looks like it should be working. Hmm. I mean, it's unclear, isn't it? Uh, I'll just remove the polling stuff anyway, since that's useless. Oops. What? Did I remove it? I thought I had text there. Huh. Okay, so let's see. Is this the right way to check for socket mark? So does Windows have socket mark? Windsock sock at mark. So the proper solution seems to be using socket mark. I could tell. Someone has a code example here. At mark. Okay, so that's what we have to do. So let's find our code. Int at mark equals zero. Um, int success equals I could tell socket IDX. I see what the hell is it? Socket mark. Mark. I can't remember it. Sock. S I O cat mark. Okay, we're doing it that way. Um, at mark if success wait is it successful or not um, okay so if equals zero and at mark equals one then it's set to poll tree that seems reasonable right i don't know why i typed mark just now instead of make like meon meon what Long int to you long. Signed int at mark. So I think the code for Windows is actually nearly done. If I can actually get the type correct here. You long. 
Alright, fine, I'll write you long. Weird. So let's test it and we'll also have to copy it. Uh, don't grab my cursor when you're behind my window, please. Oh no, chameleon, please. I'm poor, so React OS is the only Windows I have, except on my computer. On my Windows 10 machine, but it works there, so. Uh -uh. So we're gonna we're gonna basically just do a htget jukier.org mtcp htget what what are you laughing at don't laugh at me okay so it works there and we'll have the trace for that. Um, and then we're going to load this up and we're going to get, we're going to load Chameleon up if we can. Wow, you okay, React OS? Oh, here we go. Then we're going to download DOSBox. And then we're going to try and we'll compare traces and just... I don't know. If there's anything obvious, we can try and fix it. If not, nah. It could be so many things. Let's see, let's commit this to. Um, did I accidentally commit DOSBox? I don't want to commit DOSBox to my git. Uh, might have to be here all night. What do you mean? Yep, 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 yep. And we'll set the default backend from pcap to slurp. Cap slap. All right. This stream, despite being very slow paced and very trashy. Um, we've actually gotten Windows support for DOSBox Slurp, which is uh, amazing. Um, I didn't think that was actually possible. Yeehaw. Uh, not sure about Windows XP support, though. Um, I mean, I'm trying. You can't say I didn't try. So if we do htget jukia.org error reading HTTP headers and then we look at the slurp trace. Um, it should not be saying that. That's not what it should be saying. Something's wrong. Hang on a second. What does DOS junk slurp trace look like? It has polls, poll two. Uh, I'll just filter out the polls. Um, can I copy this to another computer?
What? Why would that not work? Why is it logging? Hey, there we go. There's the, the nasty. Guess we're gonna have to download DOSBox again. Fuck Windows XP. Yeah, it's old, but DOSBox kind of wants Windows XP support, like to be compatible for it. At least I think, I think that's the implication. They haven't confirmed it yet. Wow, it's taken a while to compile in the background. Close that. Close that. Close. Lame? What do you mean, lame? Who are you calling lame? Pick your next words carefully, friendo. <gasps> Where'd it go? I pressed a button and the download's possibly gone? It's unclear. View. Oh, this isn't working very well. View, please. Oh. Uh, Oh, this isn't good. Okay, we'll just try and download it again. Save. We've just got a menu here now. That's fine. Is Uwu Snuggles alright? Absolutely not. Okay, so I hit space by accident. That must have pressed cancel. Carefully press the button to unfocus that. Close Firefox because we don't need any more help. Should probably also run the Windows 32 thing here. Come on. Boot, boot, boot. Boot, boot, boot. Why are you so slow? Did I introduce a bug? Or is my computer just under load? Let's check the load. Yeah, a bit of load. So that's what we want. We want read in, then read, and then out, then read, then hop on different descriptors, I think. I think that's what we want. Let's open it. Our reading HTTP header. So let's see, what does the trace? Huh. So we're getting poll error in one of these. So 
The difference here is that with the read, we're getting pole air instead of pole in. And the out is getting pole out. And we get another read, and then we get a hop. So read pole air. Hmm. This is suspicious. So read pole air. So why would that happen? That would happen if we have a we have an error. So let's let's just quickly log what the heck's going on here. So we'll just do I and we'll do um, W S A get last error. That might work. And what we might actually do is just try and set this to poll in. It might not be valid to, to return error here. That might be my mistake. Let's see. We'll set it to poll in as well. Hmm. Does poll hop always come with poll in? You know, I haven't actually tested that. Let's check on Linux. So poll air, poll pre, poll air, poll hop. Let's uh, let's print um, let's print the slurp events as well here. And we'll see if that helps. And we'll just see if my code is actually completely different to what it should be. It might, because it's a bit mask. It's not a single value. It might be that I need to also return um, in and out and errors and stuff. So let's run this. Wait, did I turn off? Yeah, okay. So let's run this using Linux DOSBox. And then we do, um, what would we do? MTCP HT get.exe http jukia.org and then let's try doing it netcat to an invalid address that's not working so let's check what we have in the Linux log nothing nothing why oh probably because it didn't actually uh, have any of those errors um, let's do the tail for this And then let's try and get that error. And what was my net cat? 8080? Yeah. Get slash, then cancel that. And it's not saying anything. So is that because I messed up and forgot the new lines again? Yeah, it is. So poll air and poll hop, and they have a bit mask of 26, which could be. Yeah, so 
what would that be? So slurp revent would be So that would be number one, two, four, eight, sixteen. Two, eight, and sixteen. So let's check out Slurpee's code here. Um, lib slurp. Two, wait, no, that's using the bits. So zero, one would be out, three, then there would be error, then there would be hop. Okay, so these are not actually um, exclusive. And so for Windows, is that XP? No, it's actually Linux. I've just disguised it as Windows XP at the moment because I'm doing a Windows stream, Windows development stream. Hey, Shachi, what's up? All right, so let's look at our code again. So this should unconditionally be in. Then if read equals zero, um, socket error, then we should probably do this. Um, slurp events equals pole hop. If read equals, wait, no, if, what do you say, get, not much, what am I working on? I'm working on adding easy networking to DOSBox X, but I've got to get the port, the patch that I'm doing to work on Windows. So I'm just finishing that off. I managed to get it to work today. But right now, React OS isn't running it properly, which could indicate there's some kind of bug I have here. Else. All right, so this might work a lot better. Let's see. Uh, we want to print the error there. And probably the file descriptor, I guess. How is your week going? So hopefully this code will be a lot nicer. If not, well, wait. That should also be if read equals zero. I think my code before was fine, it just had else's instead of ifs. So let's see. Read equals zero, read. I can just do two, I can do a half an error there and have um, n be unconditional. There we go. That might be better. So let's see. Uh, 
And did I add new lines to the end of all of them? Yes. Tail f f trace log. So let's run this. Ah, this would be the win32 log. So let's see. And I'll also open up my netcat thing. Add TCP, HD get, get my website. That looks fine. Netcat um, target org eighty. Get slash. Yeah, that's fine. Then we just do target one two seven point zero point zero point one um, eighty eighty. Let me write some stuff. Right, right, right. Uh, this is line buffered in window in Linux, so we just do that. Then we quit that out, and that should give us a half or something. Pull in, pull up. Okay, that might be a lot better. So, let's now copy that to React OS and see how that goes. Yep. Here we go. Come on, download, download, you can do it. So does React OS actually have any shims? Hmm. I'll have to check that. Because React OS is built for Windows XP, but to run newer apps, they have to shim in order to have NT 6.0 support, which is Vista onwards. A lot change between XP and Vista. So there is some kind of compatibility mode stuff. So I'm just hoping that there's like not anything else that's terrible. I might have to upload this DOSBox executable for people to try out and test because ain't no one compiling stuff for Windows. Okay, let's open it and see if it works. And if it works, I'm going to put my face in the fire. Ah, uh, fit to aspect ratio is causing issues. All right, htget, http, jukia.org. Error reading, http headers. And, yep, yeah, 
that's all we need to see for now. Um, as well as turning off that aspect ratio option. Aspect equals false. We can go without that for a bit. All right, so what does slurp trace say? Poll error 140. 1040. I don't like that. I don't like that error. It reminds me of something. It reminds me of the not implemented error that Windows likes to give. Okay. Windows error 140. What's... Oh! That's not actually... too long. WSE messaging. Well, that's true. I only gave it an 8-byte buffer. Okay, so peaking. Oh, is this an OS error? Huh. Hmm. So it wants me to use a larger buffer, but I don't want to do that. But we can exploit this. So Read equals zero, um, or if the error, wait, no, if read equals socket error, and it equals WSA EMSG size. And that shouldn't be error. So we're not actually trying to look for the error. We're just trying to know if it's there. And so if it says that our, our buffer is too small, obviously that there's going to be stuff there to um, read. Although hmm. yeah, that means that there's data to receive. So let's actually just disable the error there for, for the case where there is actually data to receive. Okay, let's make that and then copy it over. You want to save these changes? No. So that's interesting. I'm not sure why React OS is doing that, but hey, it makes sense to me. Save file. Yep, yep, yep. So it might actually make sense to have a copy of Slurp in the DOSBox X repo if they want Windows XP support. Because the stuff that I removed and commented out is only for DNS on Linux, which doesn't make that much sense on Windows and um, ICMP 6 and NDP, which are IP version 6 stuff, which DOSBox doesn't use because, because it doesn't make sense to on very old, old machines. So we are getting there.
Let's see if Reactor is. See a cool thing about Reactor is. Wait. Message partial. Is that what I want? Message partial. I might just want that instead. Message partial is not supported by all protocols. Okay, that's fine. I'll just do it this way. It's nice to have ReactOS's source code as reference, as well as Wines, because without source code, it's like such a headache to debug through stuff. And I, I imagine that Wine developers and Win30 and ReactOS developers get it pretty right. They seem to know what they're doing. And hey, if there's a bug and it's like, it's wrong, then you can be like, ah, I got a bug. I know more than you. Ha 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 ha. I probably wouldn't say that. Okay, so let's see. Um, uh, htget jupyter.org. Error of reading HTTP headers. Again, why? Huh? not erroring about it. Did I remove the trace code? Why? Why would I do that? Whoa, I got raided. That's pretty sick. Thanks, Syrup Slushy. So WSAE message error. So what's the difference here? Out, pull out, read, read, pull in, pull up. There should be an in there. How's the DOS box coming along? Um, it's, it's making progress, but I'm just not sure what's going on, why it's not working on React OS. Um, I'm not sure that's even such a bigger deal. But, hmm. One of these should have been triggered, but it's not. Okay, so that's in. So if read is equal to zero, or it's an error. And it hops. Or if it's the message size, if there's the image message, then it will have polyam. So that should be working. We just have to imagine that there's, a, there's an empty polyam. Let's compare it to uh, wine. have to load up all the free DOS every time. I don't know why. It's certainly not the best for debugging. So let's see. Um, MTCP, htget, http, jupyter.org. Okay, so that works there. Quit that, check the trace. Read, pull in, out, pull out, read, pull in, pull up. I think my code is not quite correct. So let's refactor it a little bit to print some more. 
Okay, so let's say int error equals um, So let's just solve that. That makes sense, kind of. There we go, that seems to be what I want. Pull in, pull up, pull error. Accept FDs, pull up, pull error. So this is all looking good so far. Let's begin the tedious task of copying it over to uh, React OS. Because why not, right? I think this might be the last time I try to do this because if there's nothing like obvious then there's not much I can really do but so far the traces have looked different so let's do control G MTCP HT get then get my website then close that and we get the trace that looks like this. Read poll in 204, out poll out 208, read poll in 208, poll hub 208. So the first one must be DNS or something and the last ones must be connections to a um, server. That's what makes sense to me at least. Oh no, where did it go? Where's the download? Okay, there it is. God. Sixty seven megabytes for a DOS box. Twenty five, twenty three, twenty. Come on, download faster. Is, am I like being pranked by by QMU? Is there like a faster internet I can use? No. Okay. So let's see. Open folder. And let's run this and let's see what happens. Could be cool. The wombats are eating the cords. There's no cords. It's a VM. Okay. The cables just doesn't, can't clarify like that. Okay. Error reading HTTP headers. So what's the slurp trace say? Read poll in, out poll out. That looks fine, that looks absolutely fine. And so this is where I'm like, well, I mean, that looks identical to the actual trace from a working system, right? It's just that React OS uses larger file descriptors. 
so we have read pull in file descriptive 204 that'd be 1008 out pull out 208 read pull in 208 read pull up 208 something's something strange is happening there but i think i've gotten enough out of what i need to do like i i think i've fixed mm, Hmm. I have a bad feeling this is to do with me peeking in the data. So, against all good ideas, what if I just do... What if I just don't peek and I set it to be poll in? What if I do that? Does first of all, does that still work? Because the only thing I can think of is that peak is somehow eating the message. And that's like a side effect or something. Does React OS do message peak? I mean, this is basic protocol stuff. So I would suppose so. Yeah, so that works. Do I want to quit? Yes. So let's try, let's at least try this and see if we can document the error. And then I can actually clean up the code and, uh, push it to GitHub later. I think I might clean the code off, clean up the code off screen again. But I will have to provide a copy of the DOSBox X binary or something, or have someone build a copy for testing. Don't talk to me about fiber, okay? I live in Australia. I have fiber to the curb, which means it's, it's fiber all the way to a pit outside my house that it, if it gets rained on, it dies. And then from there, copper all the way to my house. And because of that, the connection goes from a gigabit down to 50 megabytes, megabits. Is it sexy? Cos has fiber to the premises and I'm angry. No, I don't get a gigabit. I would have, maybe I can sneak out and plug some fiber into it myself or ask them to like install proper fiber but the actual fiber part only goes to like outside my house and then they just have copper running into the house and that just really kills the speed i mean it's better than dsl but like i don't know <gasps> Y-E-S So PogChamp? Please no um, So what's actually happening here? Let's just I know I say it's going to be the last one But what we're actually going to do is we're just going to cut all this code out and we're just going to see if receiving it is somehow corrupting the message.
Like, is that the issue? That's the only thing I can think is happening, and it's confusing. But other than that, um, we're basically wait. I'm actually going to just do that explicitly like that because it makes more sense to me at least. I'm not sure if those two come up as an error. I don't think so. Pull in error, pull in hop, pull in in. So how is this compiling? That compiled. So I'm not going to copy that, the newer version yet. I've already got this open. So let's see, one more time. React OS message peak. Work around lack of message peak. Does React OS not have message peak? I mean, there's a test here. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that has my real life address at the bottom, so I have to fix that. Don't scroll down to the bottom of Google. Hang on a second. I got a parcel. I'll have to look at it later. But I might have to, I'm not, this might be a React OS bug. I'm not sure. It works in Wine. Um, could it probably work in in Windows? I mean, I'll have to try it. I think actual Windows um, would tell me for sure what's happening. And that this seems like some kind of weird React OS bug. Oh yeah, that did come back. Twitch, my Twitch stream thing is behind by like a minute. My stream preview. Okay, so if this fails, then we might have a bug in React OS or Slurp or something. I mean, I would say it's a bug in React OS. Um, there we go. All right, so there's a bug with message peak or something um, that's causing some kind of error. Um, here we go, just shut this down. And I'll have to talk to the React OS P 
people about it. Um, uh, I'm not sure if I'll put that there. I'll, I, if it's a reactor OS bug, I'll report it, but it could be something that I'm just doing wrong. Um, but I think that might be everything for Windows support. Let's remove the tracing. Tracer. Go git status, git add p source misc easement slap. Oops. Oh, not git add p. Git commit and fix. And so what we're going to do now is um, squash all that. Oh, I have unstaged changes. Um, yeah, I guess I'll just delete uh, that DOS box file. I mean, it's in my reactor OS VM if I want it. Um, git status. And so what we'll want to do, usually I don't show cleaning up git stuff on stream, um, but I might as well this time. Basically what I do is I uh, squash stuff. Um, so we're gonna squash that one. Squash that, squash that. I've got cross compile fixed there. I'll have to junk that out. Uh, I don't wanna use nano for this. Um, editor equal, equals vim cross compile fix. We drop that. Um, then we're going to edit this commit. Git show. Then we're going to do. Oh, it adds a whole bunch of stuff. All right. Um, is there a re is there a thing that allows me to actually just like stage it? Fix up, drop, reset, reword, edit. Yeah, I guess I'll. Um, it might actually be a better idea for me to just delete that. Slurpy five. Let's look at whip slurpy five. Um, and we'll just do git diff step whip slurpy5 and we'll just see what files it changes. Um, git checkout source misc ethernet slurp from um, whip slurpy5 git status, uh, sorry, dot h dot cpp. So let's just see what the diff is on um, whip slurpy5 to see if I'm missing anything. There's a lot of junk. Ah, I also need to grab the um, source DOS box. It's a lot of stuff I've done that would that allows for uh, cross compiling. I might have to try and get that upstreamed but it's not really worth it at the moment. Um, so we're gonna do mingw support. 
Let's have a look at the code to see if there's anything trashy. And we're going to quit out nano because I don't want it. And we're going to write um, something. So Ethernet PCAP initial. Uh, we shouldn't include the DOS box changes in it. Git commit v Ethernet slap um, initial Windows support. This code currently works in Wine. Okay, yeah. Wine on Linux, but seems to have a bug on React OS due to message peak eating. I wonder if message peak is defined differently on React OS. I don't know eating the input. More testing is needed, but so far this seems to work when compiled with min gw. Windows XP support requires small changes to libslurp to remove its use of inet n2p and inet p2n functions. I think that's what it was. These are only used for IP version 6 and Linux etc resolve.conf passing and aren't needed at the moment. Okay, and then we're going to add the source DOS box. Oops. Okay, I'm going to write DOS box set default any 2000 backend to slurp. So now that slurp, now that the slurp backend works, I should capitalize that on all major systems, use it over PCAP for convenience. We might have to vendor slurp I'm not sure yet. I'll have to see what the other people want. Um, yeah, so now we have two commits there. That's pretty good. I might actually just upload that to GitHub now. Let me just do this on my um, CD data dev um, DOS box, git fetch a. Git branch A. Oh, right. We have to push this into git push origin. We have to push the sixth revision of this patch set into my um, Linux thing over here. And we should probably check if it like builds on Linux, right? That seems to be important. misc so does this make and build we'll see we shall see as they say um, another thing I kind of want feedback on just from my one stream viewer here 
is I'm actually just planning on, instead of rewatching all my VODs, I might just skim through them, add some timestamps and then upload them to Diode Zone because I just can't rewatch through all my VODs at this rate. But I still want to get them up. So, uh, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think it's, I mean, it's obviously worth putting up the VODs, but, uh, too long? No one's going to watch the VODs anyway. Okay, let's check out Yeet Hub. You'll watch the VODs? Really? Um, let's go to dosboxx.org. You need that sweet Jukes content? Yeah, maybe. Um, honestly, I'm surprised that I've managed to get Windows support, you know, knock on wood, working. Um, and it looks like with a bit of effort, like if we vendor in and patch libslurp, which might actually just be a good idea in general because I'm not too sure about libslurp's ABI compatibility, sorry, API compatibility and just build compatibility, we might actually be able to get it working in Windows XP for real. So let's go look at adding my 142 comment long um, pull request. So let's see. Juke added two commits, initial Windows support, and set backend default any 2000 backend to slurp. Um, so yeah. Platform specific code has been factored out. Um, yeah, so MinGW works and can produce a binary that should be run on Windows XP and give a runtime error, which was false. After checking it with React OS, it seems that um, that Slurp itself would not run on Windows XP. And all this code looks reasonable. Yeah. So that's basically everything for this stream besides me writing it up. I suppose... I suppose we could sleuth around Reactos's bug tracker, right? Oh, let's do that. I've got a few more minutes. Let's see if we can actually find this bug on Reactos. Um, let's see, development. Uh, it would be on GitHub, wouldn't it? And so we would just want to check for any bugs, including uh, peak. It would be in commits, probably. Workaround lack of message peak. Um, hmm. So it doesn't seem to actually message peak. So we've got some API tests there. More API tests. Is it possible that React OS doesn't have window doesn't have message peak? Hmm. Although message peak here is two. And it says it's a one there. What? What? Could it just be that I need to change a number or something? Source DLLs, WinIonet. So it seems to have like message peak happening here. PSDK message peak is two. So what does Windows say message peak is? WinSuck. You know, I could probably just grep um, MinGW for this. Hang on a second. Let's close that. Um, so I actually, if we go to CD Home MXC, wait, no, CD MXC, um, grep message, oh wait, no, it'd be in user include, wouldn't it? Whoops. Uh, user i6 
include grep message peak. And let's just check, could this be a MinGW bug? Wait, it looks like it's set correctly. MinGW message peak. Hey, Kogamer, what's up? So, we know net HTTP there. So, what's the latest version of this code? React OS live at WinINet. I should probably just check out the React OS code. How am I doing? I'm doing pretty good. I got my DOSBox junk to work on Windows. Um, how much hard drive space do I have? 26 gig, that's fine. All right. So let's download. What's my opinion on Kaji? Who's that? Okay, so FTP message peak. Hmm. That username though. Yeah, Kaz has got a very, very long underscore on his username. Am I excited for Hammerfell? Um, of course. I'm excited about anything you really care about. It makes me happy. Alright. So, React OS bug tracker. They use Jira. Wholesome jukes. No, I'm not wholesome. Uh, I, I spent way too long making my setup look like Windows XP for just for just a joke. Thanks for the follow, Co Gamer. Yeah. See, I can respond to follows fast without a four hour lag like I did for Syrup Slushy. All right, let's see. It tricked you. Uh, please, please tell me. It'd be in Windsock, wouldn't it? It'd be receive. I should just dive into this code. Do you think I'll keep the theme? Um, I hope I don't. I hope this is the last theme I have to do. This last stream I have to do about this DOS box junk. The last one. No more. But I am very interested at uh, how Windsock is just not working with this. More gambling streams then? Yeah, I'll do more virtual gambling streams on fake money. I don't see any bugs about this. Um, hmm. React OS code, have you downloaded? No. Uh, message peak consumes data. LWIP, what's that? Lightweight TCP IP stack. How about Bitcoin? Any Bitcoin asides? Um, no. no, I don't do asides. 
who do you think I am? Do you think I would do a science? What kind of coward would do a science on Twitch? It's okay, Coz isn't listening. He's probably, uh... He's probably watching animes about cat boys and not telling me... Uh, Alright, it's fine. We're just gonna grab for message peak. So this is a very good example of why I like Git, because I can just download the entire source code history of something. What? How? When? When? When did I do that? Huh? What? When? Earlier? Yeah. What? Huh? What's up? Oh, I doxed myself earlier? No, no, no one's gonna notice. It kind of looks like... that it's the driver for the lightweight IP TCP I stack has got message peak defined wrong. Now I'm not saying my social security number. No, not anything but that. Wait a second. Did I vote for Biden? Is that why Biden won? <sighs> Listen, you keep sending me videos from Alex Jones. It's getting tired. He's just running around Times Square yelling about Christmas. It's, it's the 14th of January. It's over. He lost. All right, so... Let's go to DLL, Win32, WinSock2, 32. And we'll see what we have here. Source, receive, receive. So what does receive do? Receive runs, it uses sockets. That's good. That's a good start. And it calls this function LPWSP receive from. Um, that's good. I like that. So what we're going to do. Um, we're just going to check that out. We're going to just check that out. Antifa is sending Australian social security numbers said Biden will win. Yeah. Yeah. So what is WSP received from? We're diving deep into here. We're going all the way in. Are you guys ready? Down we go. Vor. Get socket structure. I admit what? I admit nothing. The past minute was just empty. Okay. So it says here if the receive flags is message peak, it gets transferred, it gets turned into TDI receive peak. All right. Is that. Is that what I'm looking for instead of message peak? So we're looking here. It looks like what we're responsible is in the drivers network AFD read C code. TDI receive peak. I mean, this code looks fine. Or is it? 
Could it possibly be that I'm looking at a bug-fixed version? No. Maybe. We don't know. But now we have more words we can use to look up things on the internet. So, let's see. TDI receive peak. Oh, that's actually like uh, Windows junk. See, you're all you're all dox doxing like I'm just slowly moving the page down. You're like, oh, it's getting close. It's getting close. It's getting close to where I live. Ah, never mind. All right, TDI receives. So I'm not sure what's up with this. Strange. The only thing I could think about, like, has there been churn or something? Let's just look at the um, change for... I mean, I don't know if this was ever working. Maybe it was never working. I mean, you know, let's keep going down the rabbit hole. Let's see where this goes. So how does it actually get... Try to satisfy the receiver request from Baha. Could it pop... You wouldn't get doxxed if you used NordVPN. That's true. Could this possibly be related to the error? The, um... The, the buffer error? Could it be shorting there? Is that what's happening? Because, like, that's a difference too, right? Let's see. WSAE message size. So, could it be that this... It all comes back? No, don't say that. This probably isn't the problem. But, it would make sense if, like, it's returning this early and it's n somehow not setting back something like like I don't know could it possibly be all right let's see e message size yes if status equals error success error success what? Sorry, what? If the status is, success is successful, it sets the error code. Okay. Alright, so it sets the error code here to e-message size. Okay. So, e-message size seems to be set by... I don't understand this code here, because it seems like it will unconditionally return e-message size if, like, all the time. Like, it doesn't seem to... Hmm... If status is error success and the flag message partial is not set... Then it returns the bytes received. 
otherwise it will do that and then error it. <laughs> I'm not going to read that, but I'm extremely laughing at that. <laughs> That's the worst virus of them all. This card looks wrong. Return bytes received, negative one. What has happened here? This looks wrong. How does Wine implement this? Uh. You know what? I don't care. I'm just going to report that as a bug. All right. We should also test that, you know, the code's not broken now. So let's try and doing that. So we made it. No warnings. And let's check that it actually works. Let's go. And that will be the end of my six hours stream. Six hours of windows. Six long hours, Kaz. Actually, I know you can't see this, but let's do an audio version of me compiling this code on windows and seeing that it works or not. Because I do have my laptop here. I'll just also test this first, as I promised I would. So does that work? Probably. So let's see, DOSBox X. Git log. Yep, so that seems to work. So if we do a git fetch on my laptop. Let's actually test to see if this thing works in Windows 10, right? So let's see. Git checkout whip slurpy. Windows is very slow on uh, my laptop. Should probably also really download the wine code anyway. Grab their, their JIT, Git, whatever. Okay, now let's run make. Where's your source code? Here we go. Downloading and installing that. That looks fine. Finally, I have all the Windows implementations. Come on, laptop, compile faster. So right now we're just waiting for the laptop to compile and test that this thing actually runs on Windows 10. But because it's a, because it's a laptop with a hard drive, it's a, and it's using auto tools, it's very slow. Did I show that this this view of the file manager yet? I know I've just opened up some directories, but it's like, wow, it just looks like Windows XP. 
absolute trash. Who would want that? Not me. Absolutely not. Put it in the fire. Put it in the fire. God jukes. No. Chad. No. Okay, we've nearly got the source code of wine, so I just, I'm interested in seeing how they do the receive and message peak stuff. They probably pass it straight through to the POSIX APIs, but uh, it just be like that. That's a mood, as they say, isn't it? What else? I should probably check my emails. Also got to like do my finances and shit. Gotta update my checkbook. I've been using GNU Cash for my uh, for my finances, and that's been working pretty well. The only thing that really bothers me about it, I mean, shout out to GNU Cash, but the only thing that really bothers me about it is that it doesn't have an undo feature. Like, you know, sometimes I make mistakes. GNU Cash 4.4. New features for what do I what version do I have? It's 3.4. So let's read the let's read the highlights. Oh, you can do command line things, that's pretty cool. Graphic user interface. Do you have undo? I don't know. I'd have to read the log, but I run to be in. Do I put everything into Bitcoin? Uh, not really, no. All right, so let's see. Does this run in Windows? Segmentation fault. Oh, that's right. My laptop doesn't. Uh, it also has the error where things crash. If you um, hey Soding, what's up? It also, uh, you know how React OS crashes if you don't give it a config file that disables OpenGL. That happens on my laptop too. LibSlurp works on my laptop. It works on an actual Windows machine. Ha ha. Yes. Yes, I did it. Ah, uh, I did it, guys. Ha ha. Time to press restart now and install updates. So, unfortunately, I think that's my entire stream for today. Oh, let's poke around wine a bit. We'll just have a quick check. Windows, Windows, Windows. Um, hmm. Hmm. I regret deleting that file now. Ah, uh, all right. Someone else can compile a version for Windows XP. Wait, what am I talking about? Hell yes! No, don't say that. Okay. Let's just run make here. Wait, no. Export. So, we're at the actual proper version here. So let's do export path equals pa uh, home jukia mxe user bin path. And I guess I'll upload this to my like website for now. Um, 
Oh, that's right. I need to cherry pick all the uh, compilation stuff. Um, so I need to get cherry pick this. I haven't tested it all, but uh, maybe that's a patch I want to keep around. I'm not too sure. Let me just type in my password to Windows. I typed it in wrong. Okay, so let's see. Let's try making this now. Oh, I typed it in right. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Tight, as they say. And then I guess I'll just upload that junk. I guess I'll have to zip it up with some stuff for people to play with, right? I don't know. Someone else can do that. I'll just upload the executable. Although I probably should zip it up with stuff. No, no. People can enjoy it. Oh, but I probably should zip it up with some stuff for them to play with. No. Absolutely not. I can do that later. Okay, it's already been a six hour stream. Someone else can do it. All right. Let's just check socket.c. So how do you handle receive? Peak. Oh, it just uses a map. I don't know. So that's that's been this this stream. Um, that's all. That's everything. Thanks for staying around for six hours. My God, what a waste of time! Absolute trash. Um, and that's about it. I shall just wait. Ah, this is going to take a while to compile. Um, I'll see y'all around. Adios, amigos.